303, I'm Mac Morey with your top stories. 53 degrees and a windy afternoon in the mid-state. Rain on and off for the rest of the day. That cold front from the thunderstorms has arrived. Got lows in the 40s tonight. Got lows in the 30s the rest of the week. Full weather forecast plus. We'll hit you up with our first traffic report of the afternoon. Headed your way in five minutes. The U.S. State Department says the deaths of seven aid workers in Gaza should have never happened. The aid workers were part of a World Central Kitchen run by Chef Jose Andres. They're calling for an Israeli investigation into what happened to be done as soon as possible. Perry Russom is in Washington. The Israeli government says they misidentified vehicles in the deadly Gaza airstrike, killing seven aid workers from World Central Kitchen. The State Department says it doesn't matter what the Israelis were intending to do. What matters is what they did. Spokesman Matthew Miller. We are looking for them to do two things. One, to conduct a full, swift, and transparent investigation. And if that investigation shows that accountability is appropriate, then there, of course, should be accountability. President Biden says he's outraged and heartbroken over their deaths. Right now in Tennessee, Shaquille Taylor, the man accused of shooting and killing Belmont student Jillian Ludwig, appeared in court today. Taylor's now been indicted for first-degree murder. Ludwig was shot at a park near campus in November of 2023. Police said Taylor was trying to shoot at a car, but one of the bullets ended up hitting her. Taylor had a lengthy criminal history prior to this tragedy. His next court date set for May 1st, where his competency will be reviewed. And that's the latest news. Traffic and a weather forecast on the way. I'm Mac Morey, WTN News. What an absolute mess. Hey, it's Dan Mandison. Look at my closets. Unorganized to say the least. Even my window dormer is a train wreck. Stuff is everywhere. Now, luckily, California Closets is coming to my rescue. My personal design consultant, Vince, stopped by, measured, and is now showing me how to become more space efficient and organized on his 3D CAD system. It is amazing. And soon, my space is going to be organized. And yes, even Bandit approves. California Closets, a local company that can customize the storage in any room of your house. California Closets, what can they do for you? Find them online at californiaclosets.com and reach out for your free in-home consultation.
Hey, it's eight minutes now past the hour, three o'clock on Super Talk 99.7. I'm Brian Wilson, your friend and radio buddy, and you're listening to The Drive on this third day of April. That's right, and uh, we got some showers pushing through the area, but uh, also, well, you know, time to time, we got some really nice sunshine. Still much cooler than we were yesterday, but uh, that's okay. A couple of cool days, then we'll get back into the nice weather for the weekend. Got a lot of things to cover here today. One of the things that I think is the big story is a Wall Street Journal poll that came out, which uh, says that uh, that Donald Trump is leading Joe Biden in six out of the seven battleground states. And uh, we'll go through all of that a little bit later uh, in the um, in the four o'clock hour. I'm set up to do. Well, I got more 2024 election news than I can. I can shake a stick at. Um, I, if I had a stick, well, I do, well, I do have a stick. Hold on, I, do, I keep this stick right here. If I shake a stick at it right there. <laughs> Why this is do my you have a stick. <laughs> <laughs> well, because my curtains, I can't reach. Them. Oh, and if I need to close the curtains, I use the stick. Man's right. got, and, and if anybody comes in here and gets out of line, man, you got to have something. Take care of business. That's right. So there, there's my stick. People, you know, they say speak softly, and carry a big stick. Mm-hmm. I right. speak loudly and I have a very big stick. <laughs> well, one out of two ain't bad. <laughs> All right. I do want to start with some local news uh, that I think I'm, that I'm just, I, I have such empathy and sadness in my heart for the family of Sebastian Rogers. Uh, this 15 uh, year old young man um, has been missing now for more than a month. And for that family, what what tragedy this must be, what uh, what pain it must be, to not know what's going on with their son. Uh, and today, uh, Sumner County Sheriff's Office announced that uh, they're going to conduct another uh, search. Um, authorities reported the search, according to uh, WKRN, would take place at Long Hollow Pike area. However, officials did not reveal why that area was chosen. And uh, Sumner County Deputy uh, er, Sheriff, or I'm sorry, Sumner County Deputy Eric Craddock said that there's been no evidence pointing to foul play, but they're just not ruling anything in or anything out. They'll let things reveal themselves as they as they as they develop. Now there was also a thing that happened um, a couple of days ago with uh, with a pair of glasses that were found, and there, there was some speculation that these may be Sebastian Rogers' glasses. The news there is that it, it was not Sebastian's glasses. According to authorities, this work is this uh, search has been in the work for several days. And in truth, uh, the sheriff's office says they have no new leads, but they just are committed to leaving no stone unturned. He's five foot five, 120 pounds, dirty blonde hair. Last seen, oh, poor family. Monday, February 26th, near Stafford Court, wearing a black sweatshirt, black sweatpants, and again, uh, nothing going on there. Th- thanks. Thank you so much to the people who dedicate themselves to doing these searches. Thank you to the Sumner County Sheriff's Office and the other law enforcement agencies that have been working on this so hard uh, to bring this family some closure to find out exactly what has happened. It is a mystery how somebody can completely vanish. Um, you know, with regard to that, you know, we all also remember the Riley Strain case, which still has many unanswered questions. Uh, and we need to know more about that waiting on the toxicology report, which may offer some answers on Sunday, as you know, in, um, in the Salem neighborhood of, um, Salem town neighborhood of Nashville, they had a shooting at a restaurant called roasted and one person was killed and five people were injured. And immediately the person who, uh, the police say is responsible, uh, Anton Rucker, uh, was put on a TBI's most wanted list. He was out on $50,000 bond at the time of the shooting, had a long, long criminal history. Uh, Well, the good news is that Anton Rucker, age 46, was arrested in Princeton, Kentucky, by uh, detectives who've located the suspected gunman in a residence. The word is that he came out and surrendered without incident. Uh, The the suspected gunman is currently being held at the Caldwell County Jail on a fugitive from justice warrant. Again, Rucker's accused of killing one man who has since been identified as 33-year-old Alan Beecham. Um, As our team continues to process and heal, uh, the folks at Roasted said they will be closed until further notice. Um, They had to close the, the restaurant down. Now, Rucker, a convicted felon with a lengthy criminal history, was out on a $50,000 bond. 
at the time he committed Sunday's crime. Okay, we got this guy. Uh, they'll, they'll bring him back eventually to be tried here in Tennessee. It will take a little time for that to happen. It, it could take a little time for it to happen. Uh, but but it seems to me that, um, you know, what we need to do this time, Judge, I'm just I, I'm just saying, can we can we put this guy behind bars with a bond where he can't get out in 20 minutes? I mean, please, the the guy should never have been released on a fifty thousand dollar bond. And again, this is part of the problem. Have we we have police officers who conduct investigations and arrest people for crimes, violent crimes. This guy has a violent crime history as long as my arm, and uh, it, it it was just it's just it's just maddening. That people who continue to violate the law in a violent way um, continue to get out, um, well, basically by posting what what he, well, it cost him five thousand dollars to get out of jail, fifty thousand dollar bond. You put down ten percent, that's five thousand dollars. So um, again, um, I um, I really hope that this time, can we please start here? Start by putting this guy away for a while, would you? Uh, and uh, and make sure that he doesn't uh, emerge from the Gray Bar Hotel anytime soon. Um, by the way, a convicted felon shouldn't have even had a gun. Uh, was was already in jail uh, and had been released on bond. Uh, and one of the charges was that he was a felon who had a gun. Well, I guess they didn't take the gun away from him. He uh, went right back to doing the things that he does. There's a, a story in the state legislature that I think is fascinating, and the question is being asked on uh, WTF t- TVF's website, Channel 5. Could arming the school staff in Tennessee make your child safer? Yeah, you know, some lawmakers think that made the case. Could a bill that would allow school staff to be armed in uh, Tennessee make your child safer? Some lawmakers think so. Some parents are concerned about it. If passed, this bill would come with a list of requirements before a staff member could have a weapon in school. They would have to have a valid handgun carry permit in Tennessee. Would have to be fingerprinted by law enforcement agencies, pass a psychological evaluation, had the written permission of the chief of the appropriate law enforcement agency, and complete 40 hours of training each year. When those requirements are met, the director of schools and chief of local law enforcement agency would be the only ones notified about people who are permitted to carry inside a school. Lawmakers say that something has to be done to protect students and staff since not every school has an SRO, a school resource officer. We have 1,868 public schools in Tennessee, and 1,302 of those, 1,302 have SROs. That leaves 566 schools across the state that do not have an SRO. I can tell you, uh, in some parts of the country, this is standard operating procedure. <laughs> I mean, I know of uh, back in my home state of Texas, a lot of school districts where somebody on that campus is packing with everybody's knowledge. And in fact, in one school district that I know of in Texas, they actually post a sign outside saying, "Hey, if you're coming in here, be aware we have our some of our some of our teachers and and some of our staff are armed uh, and we'll take action uh, if need be." I, I think that's a, that's a nice thing for people to know if they're trying to cause problems. But I, I'm really curious as to what you think about this. Um, and, uh, you know, look, there's a lot of people who care deeply about the Second Amendment, and they have very powerful feelings about this. And any kid, you know, go, any kid who goes to school has a parent that cares deeply about them. Uh, how do you feel about it, parents? Would you feel more comfortable knowing that, let's say, a coach or a a science teacher or somebody there in the school, and maybe an, a, maybe a, an assistant principal or a principal, had a, a, a concealed weapon on campus, or would it make you more nervous? I mean, it's a risk versus benefit thing, right? What's the risk versus the benefit? Well, and, in what, and what's the risk versus the benefit of not having someone on that campus uh, who could take care of business should it be needed? I'd, I'd like for you to call in and give me your thoughts about that. 615 615- Seven three seven nine nine eight six. I'll I'll just tell you right off the bat, uh, I don't have a problem with it, especially with the parameters that have been set here, where the person has to be checked out thoroughly. There has to be a concealed carry permit, forty hours of training. I don't have a problem with that, especially uh, I like the part about the psychological evaluation because somebody's going to look this person over. 
And then, then you have to notify the police chief, and the police chief has to, has to be aware of what's going on. I, I like all of those things, but I'm wondering, as a parent, how you feel about it. 615-737-9986. The question is, would you feel safer if a teacher was carrying, or would you feel that that was a, a greater risk overall to the school? 615-737-9986. Will, will this measure pass? I think it might. And I think that's good. And I, and I don't have any problem with it. So what do, you, what do you think? Get on the phone right now and give me a call. We're going to take a break. Come back and take your calls in just a moment. It is uh, 19 minutes past the hour of 3 o'clock. All right, listen up, people. I'm going to tell you about something that will help you feel better if you're in pain, and that's about the Wellness Institute of Nashville. You should call and set up an appointment today. Why wait any longer? 615-246-5009. You see, there's no magic pill or uh, some kind of spinal cream that you can slap on that will take the pressure off the nerves, pinched nerve in your back. You either have to go under surgery, under the knife, or you can go after some non-surgical procedures to open up that spinal disc and to feel better. Well, I know what I chose. I didn't want to go under the knife. I wanted to try the non-surgical approach at the Wellness Institute of Nashville. Dr. Kevin Mitchell and Dr. Ashley are experts of non-surgical spinal decompression, and it works. I promise you, it works. Wellness Institute of Nashville has state-of-the-art facilities, all kind of high-tech gear. Uh, they have the, uh, the, the robot lasers that can stimulate uh, your cells. That KT knee machine, which is a spinal decompression for the knee, which elongates the knee and helps repair the torn meniscus and knee pain, allow the, the therapy to go deep within your knee and, uh, and all kinds of things. If you suffer back or neck pain or facing knee surgery, you ought to yourself to try the Wellness Institute of Nashville. You'll see Dr. Mitchell or Dr. Ashley at every single visit. So listen, give them a call, 615-246-5009. Learn more at their website, painisbad.com. What an absolute mess. Hey, it's Dan Manderson. Look at my closets. Unorganized to say the least. Even my window dormer is a train wreck. Stuff is everywhere. Now, luckily, California Closets is coming to my rescue. My personal design consultant, Vince, stopped by, measured, and is now showing me how to become more space efficient and organized on his 3D CAD system. It is amazing. And soon, my space is going to be organized. And yes, even Bandit approves. California Closets, a local company that can customize the storage in any room of your house. California Closets, what can they do for you? Find them online at californiaclosets.com and reach out for your free in-home consultation.
The man responsible for killing one and injuring five others on Easter Sunday in Salem Town, Nashville, has been caught, but not here in Tennessee. A new outbreak of the avian flu and Tennessee avoided some major destruction from yesterday's storms, but not some of our neighbors. They did not have the same fortune. We'll tell you all about it. 3.30 Super Talk, 99.7 WTN. It is 24 minutes now past the hour at 3 o'clock on Super Talk 99.7. Brian Wilson in the chair. We, we've been talking about this bill that, well, it's passed the Senate. It goes to the House in a, in a week or so at, uh, to make a decision. And it would allow some teachers, to, after they go through uh, some training and, and, uh, and they get uh, you know the, a psychological evaluation, a whole list of things they got to go through, to actually carry a weapon on school grounds. Uh, and I'm reminded, you know, many schools do have SROs, but some don't. And we have a situation where... In the, in the Covenant shooting, for example, we were told by uh, Brink Fiddler, the man who uh, actually helped train some of the people over there uh, prior to uh, the incident that occurred, that tragic incident, that, uh, that the, the damage was done in three minutes. Police arrived eight minutes after the first call. So, you know, in those first minutes... Uh, when seconds count, police are minutes away. And they, you know, they did remarkable work when they got there, but it took them eight minutes. So how do you feel about this? Let's go to the phone lines. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, start with uh, uh, Caitlin in Nashville. Hello, Caitlin. You're on with Brian on the drive. What do you say, Hi. Caitlin? Hi, Brian. I would absolutely feel comfortable and safer um, with my children. Having someone like that is kind of similar to a U.S. Air Marshal. I don't know why we can't have that in schools. U.S. Air Marshals protect, you know, people in planes and civilians in planes. Why our children should be the most protected class that we have. So I don't see why that would be any different. And I feel like if we have something in place, sort of like an air marshal, I know they're, they're also police officers or they're law enforcement, but I feel like that would be a good, a, a good thing. I, I, I'm sort of with you on that, but Caitlin, thank you very much. I got a lot of people I want to put through here to see, get a sample. Uh, Pat is out on the road. Hello, Pat. You're up with Brian on the drive. What do you say, Pat? Oh, I'm absolutely, Brian, I'm absolutely for it. I think it's a great idea with one caveat. I, the police chief has no business say, having veto power over it. Why should he be able to say yay or nay? That's just like up in New York when you wanted to go get a carry permit. The chief of police had to say whether or not he thought you needed one. To hell with that. Well, um, well apparently, as I read it here, they, they see you have to have written permission of the chief of the appropriate law enforcement agency. Um. Uh, so I guess, yeah, the chief does have to sign off on it. Also have to complete 40 hours of training every every year, which I think is not a bad idea. If you're going to take on that responsibility, then you need to have the skills to handle. Uh, thank, I think good point, uh, Pat. I that, uh, thank you a lot. I appreciate you calling in. Becky in Coffee County. Hello, Becky. You're on with Brian on the drive. Hi, Brian. I have very mixed feelings about this. I am very pro-gun, pro-carry. Everybody should have the right to do that. But I am also a teacher, and I know that I would never want to carry because some of my students are bigger and stronger than I am and could overpower me. I would never want to introduce that to the situation. Yeah, I think I think there would also probably, most schools would have a requirement. Well, I mean, it's called a concealed carry, but, I mean, would, would you have it on you all the time? That would be, of course, the most effective way to stop something that we're, we're not having. But you could also have a lockbox. In the desk and key, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Yeah, I listen, I, I think I, I get your point, but, uh, you know, one of the things they say is nobody will really know whether you're caring or not if you uh, handle that properly. But, Becky, good point. Thanks a lot. Appreciate the call. Elliot in Nashville. Elliot, you're on with Brian on the drive. Hi, Brian. Yeah, I, I agree with this policy. I think uh, I've thought for a long time that teachers, if they go through the proper training, should be allowed to carry a weapon. I believe it would uh, stop the uh, the possibility of gun shootings in schools. I also think uh, posting a sign at every school, like you said earlier, everybody on the premises is armed and knows how to use their weapon uh, at, their, at your own risk kind of thing. There are several places I just do not shop because I'm not allowed to carry my gun in. Uh, I went through the proper training and everything, so I have made the decision that I'm going to protect myself the best I possibly can. And I think yeah. that we should be doing the same thing for our children. 
Well, you know, boy, I tell you the way things are getting in Nashville these days, you know, you make a good point. You know, you you got to look out for yourself and your family, right? I appreciate it. Elliot, thanks. James in Murfreesboro, uh, we got time to squeeze you in. James, what do you think about it, buddy? Hey, Brian. Um, I'm all for it. Uh, I mean, having a second second shoot, uh, second defender in, in these schools with the SRO is a great idea. Plus, I'm also an instructor of an adult uh, teaching facility, and so I've got a lot of guys in in there that are bigger than I am. But I'd rather have you know, I'd I'd like to be able to carry and to defend the school and myself for that matter. Uh, so I, I'm I'm all for it, and the background check and the um, psychological check, oh, most definitely, because you never know what you're going to get, and that yearly psychological check could really really go far. Well, one would hope that if they're teaching our kids that they've been through some kind of evaluation in that regard, that would be my hope. <laughs> you know, I, I guess I ultimately come down to this, and that is that, you know, it, it, that when it, when you need the police, they're going to come running as fast as they can, but it can be several minutes. And in those first few minutes, that's where a lot of the damage is done. As we said in the Covenant case, uh, the six people were killed within three minutes. Three minutes. Police arrived about five minutes after the last person was killed. That's a, that's a, not a, that's a, that's, that's a dangerous time and for the time the call goes out to the time the police arrive. And I've never wanted to be in a situation in my own life where it's, it's all them and no me. In other words, somebody has the power because they have a weapon and I don't have any options. I don't want to be in a situation where it's all them and no me. And if, if, uh, if it goes down badly, okay, then uh, we'll take our chances. We'll, um, We'll see what happens. I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried out by six. All right, ladies and gentlemen, great conversation. I really appreciate the calls. 3.30 now on Super Talk 3.30, I'm Mac Morey with your top stories. Currently 53 degrees in Nashville. Wind and rain possible throughout the afternoon and evening. Weather forecast, got a traffic report coming up as well in five minutes. Right now in Tennessee, Anton Rucker, the suspect in the Easter Sunday shooting at the Salem Town restaurant that ended the life of one and injured five others, has now been arrested in Kentucky. Officials located him at a home in Princeton, Kentucky. He'll be transported to Nashville later to face charges. 46-year-old Rucker fled the scene in a Mercedes following that shooting. He was out of jail on a combined $50,000 bond for aggravated assault charges. 33-year-old Alan Beecham was the one killed in that shooting. And a new outbreak of avian flu has forced the nation's largest producer of eggs to temporarily shut down plants in Michigan and Texas. It comes even as health officials have found bird flu infections in dairy cattle and now at least one person Karen Travers with the latest from the Biden administration. The White House says President Biden has been briefed on the cases of bird flu that have been identified so far, and this is something they're monitoring here. Press Secretary Corrine Jean-Pierre. CDC is, has been working with rele, uh, relevant agencies uh, to make sure that uh, we, we keep the American public protected here. Jean-Pierre told me the White House is closely watching any economic impact of bird flu, with the nation's largest egg producer temporarily shutting down production at multiple plants due to chickens testing positive. And Tennessee avoided major destruction from yesterday's storm outbreak, but not some of our neighbors, including Kentucky, where one person died after severe storms brought a string of tornadoes to the state. Governor Andy Bashir also declaring a state of emergency and said that multiple counties were affected. At a news conference today, Governor Bashir also said that at least seven tornadoes may be confirmed to have hit his state. We had one fatality, which again is tragic, but, but that many different communities hit with this many tornadoes um, were both fortunate but we've also put very good communication systems uh, in place, and, and people have really heeded the warnings. And that storm system has moved farther east, affecting the Carolinas, all the way up into New England, where heavy snow is in the forecast. That is the latest news. Traffic and weather on the way. I'm Mac Morey, WTN News. The guaranteed offer is the easiest way to sell your home. It's really simple. We bring you an all-cash offer. You close in as little as 21 days. No home inspections. No lockboxes, no open houses. Go to MarkSpain.com to get a guaranteed offer and start packing.
38 minutes past the hour at 3 o'clock, man. I tell you what, right now, uh, it is beautiful in uh, bucolic Watertown. I mean, I've got partly cloudy skies, abundant sunshine, still a little cool, about 63 uh, degrees here. You mean 53? That's, that's, yeah, it is 53. Yeah. I, I got to get a, I gotta bigger, get a bigger thermometer <laughs> or better glasses. These are new glasses, so they should be okay. Yeah, 53. But anyway, glad that you're with us here. Uh, it is cool outside. Uh, yes. And, and, and much different than what we had yesterday when the Thunder Boomers were bouncing all around. We sort of <laughs> they use that phrase that meteorologists will use today. We really dodged a bullet. But, I mean, in this case, we really did because yeah. the storms to the north were more severe. Uh, the storms to the south were more severe. I think we had one little possible tornado. Uh, it was right after we got off the air last night at 7. Uh, and it was, uh, there was a, about uh, maybe 10 or 11 minutes on the ground, uh, if at all, you know, it, it was one of those radar indicated tornadoes. So mm. I think we got out pretty good with everything. Uh, did you guys have any trouble with, uh, the, the, the storms yesterday? You know, I had like uh, a pretty severe thunderstorm at probably seven forty-five, something like that. I, you know, I, I it you was shortly home, after yeah. I got home yeah. and, uh, and it was like, wow, that, that kind of came out of nowhere and it rained and thundered and. You know, for about 10 minutes, then, then it was gone. And that was about it. Yeah. Mac? Yeah, just, yeah, rain and thunder and just was, yeah, I you know, nur trying to nurture my dog, who's such a baby about that, you know, finding oh, her. Oh, yeah. and it's, it, it's sad when dog, some dogs are really troubled by yeah. thunder and lightning. Yeah. And, they don't and understand. They really they don't. don't. get it. That's right. I, I'm, I'm fortunate. My bulldog just goes, hey, what was that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who's that making noise that? very fortunate but i know I've, I've, I've had dogs that were frightened in the past yeah. all right well why don't we head on down to the swamp then real quick uh you know i spent 31 years in that godforsaken swamp and so you know I, what i do is i try to find stories and then give you the background help you understand them a little better and why why they're interesting why they're important and why we care that's the goal you know, good journalism not only has, it tells you who, what, when, where, but why? And the why is often, why should I care about this? So that's always something that I try to put into it. Uh, Lauren Boebert, representative from Colorado, you know, you've seen her. She's uh, quite conservative and and uh, and very out there sometimes, very out outspoken, let's put it that way. A and uh, she, is, uh, she had to go under surgery Tuesday to remove an acute blood clot and was subsequently diagnosed with having something known as may Thurner syndrome, which is a rare vascular uh, condition that can disrupt blood flow. Dangerous, too, by the way. She was admitted to UC Health Medical Center in the Rockies in Loveland after experiencing severe swelling in her upper left leg, her campaign said. She went to CT scan. Doctors found the clot. They inserted a stent and removed the clot, and now she is recovering. Um Bobert is resting and expected to make a full recovery. There are no significant concerns regarding her long-term health. I mean, she'd be put on blood thinners and, and that kind of stuff. Dietary restrictions, maybe. Uh, will not impact her ability to perform her duties as a congresswoman. And that is, that is exceptionally good news. Because right now, uh, here's why uh, you know, that one member of Congress getting ill is uh, such an important story, especially if it's on the Republican side of the equation. We simply cannot afford to lose any Republican members because if we lose, well, I think it is right now. It changes from day to day. But I think right now, if we lose two members uh, on the Republican side of the equation, we lose control of that body and the Democrats will take over control. Pretty amazing when you think about it. Uh, and so um, it is important that you know, we pray daily for the continued health of Republicans who serve in the House uh, because we can't afford to lose any. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's, I mean, you talk about a razor-thin margin. It really is a razor-thin margin. I did read a, a story the other day, maybe it's earlier this morning, that said that most Republicans have said very, very, um, very, very vehemently that they are not in the mood to mess with uh, replacing the speaker right now. So I don't think that's going to happen because if you did that, then you run the risk of uh, having a real problem. We have uh, more calls for Justice Sotomayor to step down from the highest court in the land, the Supreme Court. And you say, well, why is that? Well, 
I guess that Democrats are now increasingly worried that Donald Trump becomes president. And when he becomes president, if there's a vacancy in the high court, he makes the appointment. He makes the appointment. And if it, if it, if it happens now, while Joe Biden is still in office, then uh, he um, that Joe Biden will make the appointment and it would be a Democrat, a more liberal member of the court. If she were to step down and be replaced uh, by a liberal, it wouldn't change the balance of the court. If she were to uh, stick in there and for some reason later had to resign because of age or some other thing, and we had a Republican president in there, that could change very much so the uh, high court because it's a 6-3 conservative majority. That would take it from 7-2. So replacing her really doesn't change the 6-3 majority, but but uh, if you were to have a Republican president and he gets to make the nomination, it would be a 7-2 conservative court virtually um, you know, having a super majority in the high court. And so that's why I think that there are Democrats who say, okay, listen, um, had a nice run, Sonia, but it, we need to make sure that uh, we got a, a, a liberal member of the high court in your slot for years to come. So a lot of people are asking her to step down and, uh, I don't know if she'll do it or not. If it happens, it has to happen literally bef- before the election. Uh, I would say a couple of months more for the election. If there were going to be confirmation hearings, Chuck Schumer would absolutely push forward with confirmation hearings, um, uh, even if it were you know just a few months before the election. So I would look very closely, watch the high court in the in the next few weeks. I would say, maybe as they start to issue all their opinions, uh, after you know some of the opinions come down. Uh, she could do it, but I mean, running up a, a Supreme Court nominee takes about three, four months from the time you make the appointment to the time, the confirmation hearings, it can be a while. And so if uh, Democrats are going to replace her, she's got to be willing to step down. And I would say probably in the next month or so. So watch that federal judge strikes down Biden's greenhouse gas emissions rule, huge ruling. And it comes from the state of Kentucky, a federal judge in Kentucky has struck down a Biden administration rule that required states to measure and report the greenhouse gas emissions from any vehicle traveling on the national highway system. With this victory in court, they're slamming the brakes on the Biden administration's policies that make no sense, said Kentucky Attorney General Russell Coleman, who led a coalition of 21 state attorneys general in suing the Federal Highway Administration over the rule that sought to force states to cut carbon dioxide emissions on the road. Um, Judge Benjamin Beaton of the U.S. District Court of the Western District of Kentucky blocked the rule in a 26-page order and issued uh, the, the, in, in issued it invalid and st- a statutorily unsupported, unsubstantively ca- capricious exercise of the um, Federal Highway Administrator's rulemaking authority. That's a pretty strong language. Will they appeal? I bet they will because the greenies, the greenies over in the uh, in the Biden administration. You know, the new Green New Deal stuff, they're all going to be out there. But, I mean, this is good news and eases up um, the effort to try to force us into electric vehicles before we're ready. Among those who were joined on the lawsuit, Alabama, Alaska, Arkansas, Florida, Idaho, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Mississippi, Montana, North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Dakota, South Carolina, Utah, Virginia, West Virginia, and Wyoming. Notably missing out of that is Tennessee, I'm surprised. Um, so this happens. That's good news. It really is. Now, here's one that hacks me off. Biden administration cancels the purchase for strategic petroleum reserve, citing high prices. They have canceled plans to purchase millions of barrels of oil to refill the depleted U.S. strategic petroleum reserve as oil prices rise to a five-month high. The Biden administration wanted to do a buyback to replace the oil that it took out to artificially keep uh, oil and gasoline prices low during, uh, you know, the important midterm elections. They didn't want gasoline prices to spike in the midterm elections, thinking the Democrats would be. So they they took oil out of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, which is supposed to be used for natural emergencies, not for political emergencies. Uh, and so they, they, he said, well, well, we'll put it back. We'll put it back. Well, the problem is now it's been drawn down lower than it has ever been drawn down in the history of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. This is basically, uh, in some cases, I think down on the southern Gulf Coast, 
there are gigantic salt domes under the earth, and they just fill them up with oil. Huge underground salt domes filled with oil. And, uh, and they're supposed to be there for times when we have a national emergency, like time of war. Maybe there's, a, let's say, a hurricane that wipes out oil platforms in the Gulf of Mexico. That would be a national emergency. But Biden took it out for political reasons. And now we're, it's about drawn halfway down. The, you know, the world is falling apart around us, and we don't have enough oil in the strategic reserve. Um, so when it got to $85 a barrel, they called it off. It's now a barrel of oil selling for about 90 bucks a barrel right now. Largest drawdown in the history of the stockpile by the Biden administration. The sales did help alleviate price for consumers, which was the political purpose of that, but also sent levels plumbing to a 40-year low and prompted concerns that a lengthy depletion period could leave the U.S. vulnerable and resource strapped in the event of emergency. Um, they, they cannot do what they said they're going to do, which is to fully replenish the strategic petroleum reserve by the end of the year. So unless it comes back down to around 79 bucks a gallon, or I'm sorry, 79 bucks a barrel, then, uh, they're not going to replace it. And, and that's a, that's not a good thing to have about half of the oil in our strategic petroleum reserve still used and not repay, not replenished. Again, uh, they will use any lever of government that they have at their disposal for a positive political purpose. Everything gets twisted for political purpose and political advantage by this administration, and this is another example of it. We ought to not go into this thing unless there's truly an emergency, and, uh, and just because you have an election looming, doesn't really qualify in my mind for a political emergency. And that's our swamp wrap up at 350 now on Super Talk 997. Hey, it's Dan Mandison. I love my Patriot Supply. It's emergency food so you can care for your family no matter what. And today, we're fixing creamy chicken flavored rice. And the thing I love about my Patriot Supply, it's easy. You just get the water, turn on the heat, and in minutes, we are ready to go. Now, this food lasts for 25 years in special packaging. And yes, it does taste great. And in just minutes, it's ready to eat. Patriots don't rely on the government to take care of their family in emergencies. It's up to you. Order right now and get $200 off a three-month food kit. It's important to go to preparewithmandis.com to get that great discount. That's preparewithmandis.com to get that great discount. Preparewithmandis.com, $200 off a three-month food kit.
Keeping tabs on the bridge repair in Baltimore, the Easter Sunday shooter here in Nashville Nashville found and arrested a months-long proxy battle over for one of the world's primary entertainment companies. The man accused of shooting and killing Belmont student Jillian Ludwig now in court and more legal trouble for Kanye West. Those stories and more at 4 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. 57 minutes now past the hour, 3 o'clock on Super Talk 99.7. Time to look at the markets and see how they closed out. Another down day on the Dow, down 43 points, but the S&P was up by about 5.5, NASDAQ up 37. Mixed boards today, and uh, I think probably the market's reacting to comments today from Fed Chairman Jerome Powell. For more on that, let's check in with John Maxson over at Beacon Capital Management. Good afternoon, John. Hey, good afternoon, Brian. Yeah, Fed uh, chairman came out and spoke today. The market was listening. It was actually down quite quite a bit or a little bit more as the day started. But he came out and really acknowledged that the recent data on inflation was stronger than what they expected. Of course, we all knew that. Um, I don't think what the market was expecting is that he said that that did not change his position on decreasing interest rates later in the year. He did go on to say that they that they wanted to see to build up more confidence in some additional reports that would be coming out. But I think the market was a little surprised pleasantly uh, that he said it did not change his position. But sometimes that's a really bumpy path with inflation. Initial jobless claims tomorrow and a jobs report on Friday, really important to pay attention to. All right. Thank you very much, John. And to find out all about what they can do to help you over at Beacon Capital Management with your retirement plans, why don't you just go to their website, askbeaconnow.com. It's 59 minutes past the hour of 3 o'clock. Four oh one. I'm Mac Morey with your top stories. Fifty two degrees and got a breeze outside, paired with on and off rain. Gonna have a bit chillier rest of the week as the weekend will warm up. Traffic complete weather forecast coming up five minutes away. Baby steps in Baltimore. The effort to clear the wreckage of the key bridge starts with clearing the ship that brought it down. Here's Dave Packer. The bow of the Dali container ship is sitting under hundreds of tons of twisted bridge wreckage that will have to be removed before the ship can be floated away. In order to do that, says U.S. Coast Guard Rear Admiral Shannon Gilreath. We need to lift those undamaged containers off to give us space to safely operate, to begin to plan to remove portions of the bridge that are also 
now embedded into the ship. Gilruth says crews are now staged to begin lifting the first of the undamaged containers off the ship. Right now in Tennessee, Anton Rucker, the suspect in the Easter Sunday shooting at the Salem Town restaurant that ended the life of one and injured five others, has now been arrested in Kentucky. Officials located at a, him at a home in Princeton. He'll be transported to Nashville to face charges. 46-year-old Rucker fled the scene in a Mercedes following that shooting. He was out of a jail on a combined $50,000 bond for aggravated assault charges. 33-year-old Alan Beecham was the one killed in that shooting. And a months-long proxy battle is over for one of the country's biggest entertainment companies, says Alex Stone. Disney shareholders have rejected activist investor Nelson Peltz, which ends a combative months-long proxy battle. A majority of shareholders on Wednesday voted in support of a 12-person board put forward by the Walt Disney Company. Disney is a parent company of ABC News. Peltz's hedge fund had offered up Peltz and a former Disney executive to take activist roles on the board in a high-profile campaign critical of the company's growth. Right now in Tennessee, Shaquille Taylor, the man accused of shooting and killing Belmont student Jillian Ludwig, appeared in court today. Taylor's now been indicted for first-degree murder. Ludwig was shot at a park near campus in November of 2023. Police said Taylor was trying to shoot at a vehicle, but one of those bullets ended up hitting her. Taylor had a lengthy criminal history prior to this tragedy. His next court date set for May 1st, where his competency will be reviewed. And more legal trouble for Kanye West, Jason Nathanson. Kanye West, accused of severe discrimination, harassment, and retaliation in a new lawsuit. A former employee at his Donda Academy private school says Ye would scream at and berate black employees while never even raising his tone towards white staff. The rapper is also accused of making anti-Semitic remarks in front of some of the kids, spewing hate speech, and wanting to shave kids' heads and lock them in cages. The plaintiff, Trevor Phillips, is seeking 35000 bucks. No response so far from Ye. And that is the latest news, traffic and weather on the way. I'm Mac Mori, WTN News. The guaranteed offer is the easiest way to sell your home. It's really simple. We bring you an all-cash offer. You close in as little as 21 days. No home inspections, no lockboxes, no open houses. Go to MarkSpain.com to get a guaranteed offer and start packing.
Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Brian Wilson, your friend and radio buddy, and you're listening to The Drive, hour number two on this third day of April. And we got and now 54 degrees. I have I have to really raise my in my glasses. I just got to get a bigger thermometer. I don't. Or a magnifying yeah, glass. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I just need to be younger <laughs> is what I. It's uh, 54 degrees here in Bucolic Watertown and a beautiful afternoon. We've had some showers coming through. It's been like bright sunshine, shower. Bright sunshine, yeah, exactly. little shower. But uh, certainly got through the worst of it last night without any incident, except, you know, we had to we had to take all the, spend an hour getting the leaves out of the pool. Oh, yeah. And it was really blowing last night, I'll tell you that for sure. That's third world problems there. First world problems, what that is. You didn't lose uh, any uh, trash trees, though, did you? No, sadly, they're all still, ah. 10 of them are still standing. Oh, I was well. hoping maybe one would take the, would take the hit. We just have it dragged out of here. All right. We got some 2024 news. And I got to say, I got so much of it that I don't think I can fit it all into one segment. But let's uh, let's start down that path now if you want. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll go through some of this. The big news, I think, is that uh, there was a new Wall Street Journal poll which uh, says that uh, Trump leads Biden in six out of the seven swing states. That's good. And uh, this is a good poll, by the way, um, a pretty reliable poll in the past. So uh, six states. What are the what are the states? Well, I've, I've got them all written down here. You ready? Uh, and I, I just did uh, I did the five ways instead of the two ways. In other words, a two way is just Biden versus Trump, but a five way all the candidates who might appear on the ballot. All right. So uh, I think it's more likely we're probably going to have you know at least three candidates on the ballot, if not more. Uh, Arizona, Trump leads by five. In Georgia, Trump leads by three. In Michigan, Trump leads by two. In Nevada, Trump leads by four. And in North Carolina, he leads by eight. Pennsylvania, uh, he leads by three. And in Wisconsin, it is a tie. If you look at the two-way race, if you look at the five-way race, Biden wins by three. So six out of the seven safely in the Trump corner. But I think it's really important when you have a poll of this nature to spend a few moments doing the deep, deep dive in what we call the internals of the poll. Let me, let me say, here's a pro tip. Okay, folks, if you really care about this stuff, like I do, I get all jazzed with this kind of stuff when it comes out, you go to the poll, like on realclearpolitics.com and you see, well, this is wall street journal and click on that, that link where the poll is, and it will take you to the actual poll. And, and an actual poll doesn't just say, who are you going to vote for? An actual poll will, will go deeper and ask a lot of questions. And, and really, if you want to know what the sentiment of the people uh, who uh, respond to this poll is, you go to the internals. And all of the internal, well, most all, well, almost every one of the internals is positive, I think, for Donald Trump. Right direction, wrong direction of the nation. 68% of Americans believe that we are headed in the wrong direction. Even in Wisconsin, 62% of the people believe that. Now, when you say the direction of the nation, that is sort of thought as a, an assessment of how people look at how the, the current administration is functioning. Uh, are we in the right direction? Or are we heading in the wrong direction? 68% of Americans say, uh, in this battleground poll, say we're in the wrong direction direction that works well for trump bad for biden um uh, favorables and unfavorables how are the candidates viewed um uh, you, you look at the uh total unfavorables and it's pretty close <laughs> joe biden 59 percent of those said uh, they had an unfavorable feeling about joe biden for uh trump it was 52 so people look at joe biden more unfavorably than they do donald trump Robert F. Kennedy, um, his unfavorables are only 34%. Uh, if the 2024 election were held today, for whom would you vote? At Donald Trump, 39, the average of all these battleground states, 39 for Donald Trump, 36 for Joe Biden, 11 for independent Robert F. Kennedy, two for West, one for libertarian Lars Mapstead, and one for Green Party candidate Jill Stein, 10% though, say they are uh, undecided. That's a rather high level of undecided in this election where I think we know. <laughs> we know everything we're probably going to have. You know, there's not much more to learn about Joe Biden. There's not much more to learn about Donald Trump. I think most people have locked in and are locked in pretty well. Um, 
And uh, and they, they're sometimes they will ask, well, who you leaning for? And that sort of reveals where their ultimate sentiment lies. I don't have that in uh, in this particular case. Uh, do you approve of the uh, the job that uh, Joe Biden is doing as president? Uh, 60% disapprove. 60% of Americans disapprove. Only 38% of Americans like what they see with Joe Biden. Um, and then we, this is this is where you really get down to the real meat of it all, because what are the issues that matter most to, to Americans? I think we all agree that it's probably, you know, these three. Uh, the economy. Trump wins big on how he uh, would handle the economy. Trump 54, Biden 34. Inflation and rising costs. Trump 53, Biden 33. Number three, immigration and border security. 52% trust Trump uh, versus Biden and believe that Trump would do a better job of handling border security. And this one tells you a lot uh, about what the people think about the current president of the United States. The, uh, you know, the mental and physical fitness needed to be president. Who has it? Trump 48. Ready? This is big. Biden, 28. You've got a 20-point lead with him on that. Uh, then we get into Ukraine. Again, uh, Trump does okay there. Israel, the war between Israel and Hamas, Trump does okay there. Um, the only one where you see uh, Trump not win is on the issue of abortion, but it's way down the line here of in the level of importance with most voters. How would you rate the strength of the U.S. economy? Um... 63% said not so good to poor. 63%. And remember, these are all battleground voters. We're really getting to the to, to the, the, the most important voters. Now, that's not to say that your vote's not important. But I'm telling you, if you're trying to get to 270 electoral college votes, uh, these are the states you have absolutely got to be focusing on. Uh, for whom did you vote in the 2020 presidential election? Um, 41% said they voted for Donald Trump. And 42% said they voted for Democrat Joe Biden. So if they were, there's been a dramatic shift in the battleground states since the 2020 presidential election in the direction of Trump. So all of this stuff, with the exception of one question, I think really works very well for Trump when you start talking about the issues that drive people when they're getting ready to vote. So a really remarkably good poll, but again, uh, in the battleground states, Trump wins six out of seven. And uh, we're watching Wisconsin. I think Wisconsin's going to be very tight. I think the one to watch most often, though, and the one that's really going to be crucial, it's, it's, it's a pretty close tie between Michigan and Pennsylvania. Uh, by the way, uh, the First Lady of the United States is not buying any of this. It came up on when she was doing a talk show, one of those morning talk shows, and the, the host of the show said, well, well, you know what about all these battleground states? He's losing in all the battleground states. Wall Street Journal won land in the White House, and he's losing in all the battleground states. That... No, he's not losing in all the battleground all states. He's coming up, and he's um, even or doing better. So, mm. you know what? Once people start to focus in and they see their two choices, mm -hmm. it's obvious that Joe will win this election. All right. All right. But, you see, you know, what kind of sunshine are they pumping? over there to uh, the first lady and the president of the United States. Yeah, well, no, 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 that's not true. Well, it is true. Here is the Wall Street Journal poll, six out of seven states. Trump is winning and, uh, and Biden is not, if the polls are correct. Well, you know, it'll all change if people focus in. What do you think at this point people don't know about Joe Biden that's going to change their mind? Some, what miraculous piece of information is going to emerge about Joe Biden? They go, oh, Oh, really? Well, okay, I changed my mind. I don't see that happening. I think that the thing is, in this particular election, I'm really feeling pretty strong about this idea. We know the candidates so well because they've been around for a while. We know everything that I think we need to know about Trump. We know everything we need to know about Joe Biden. And once you sort of fall into one or two of those other those camps, uh, you know, it seems like it's very hard to change people's minds. And I think a lot of people's minds are made up. I mean, according to the battleground poll, 10% said they weren't. But if you push them a little bit, they'll tell you which way they're leaning. 
there was um there was a, a a primary in Wisconsin for Democrats yesterday, and um, it's amazing. Uh, you know, of course, Joe Biden won. There was no doubt about that. Uh, but what's interesting is uh, one number about people who decided that they didn't want to take a position as Democrats in this election. I'll give you the details on that, and I'll tell you a little bit more about some good news about how much money they're raising, uh, some fantastic news for Republicans out of Nevada, and uh, and the fact that Trump is now getting very serious about his vice presidential choices. It's all straight ahead. Let's call it 19 minutes past the hour, 4 o'clock on Super Talk. All right, folks, I hold in my hand good news for you if you are thinking about buying a new mower for your yard. Maybe you want to get rid of those fancy-schmancy zero-turn mowers. I'm telling you, I love my Cub Cadet that I got over at uh, D.T. McCall and Sons. A great buy. And so right now, they got a special uh, buying um, se season on, uh, and there's a big mower sale at the Carthage location. You really need to go up to Car. That's a That's a fantastic shop. Saturday, April 20th. So you got a few days to get ready. You're going to have a huge mower sale. If you've been looking for one of those zero-turn mowers or any kind of mower, really, any kind of power tool that you need to maintain your yard, you're going to find it at DT McCall. It's been around for more than 100 years, and they have a reputation for treating people right. That's how you last that long. And then whenever possible, the thing I love about DT McCall is they try to sell products that are made and manufactured in Middle Tennessee. So if you need furniture, if you need appliances, you need a big screen TV, if you need uh, a mower or some power tools to work in your yard, this is the place you go. DT McCall's. Find out more about their five convenient locations and uh, go into their website, dtmccalls.com. The guaranteed offer is the easiest way to sell your home. It's really simple. We bring you an all cash offer. You close in as little as 21 days, no home inspections, no lockboxes, no open houses. Go to MarkSpain.com to get a guaranteed offer and start packing.
storms slowing down that bridge repair in Baltimore. Plus, our latest money news report. Taking a look at Wall Street, 430 Super Talk, then a 97 WTN. 23 minutes now past the hour of uh, 4 o'clock on Super Talk 99.7. You know what? We have got so much of this election news that I can't get it all into one segment. So let's continue our discussion about the 2024 election and talk about what happened in Wisconsin yesterday. They had a primary, uh, and uh, Joe Biden, it's a Democrat primary. Joe Biden did okay. He won, you know, as, unex- as expected. But just under 50,000 voters in the Wisconsin Democratic primary Hit the button for uninstructed. Now, that's like unaffiliated or basically, let's just call it what it is. It's a protest vote. It's Democrats saying, I don't like my choices here, so I'm not going to pick anybody's name. Now, in in the last election, I think about 2% people of people did that. This year, it was about uh, 48,000 votes or about 8% of the total outcome. That's right. For Joe Biden, Joe Biden, they didn't want any, they, they, about, about 8% said, we don't like this choice, essentially. And again, remember, what, why is Wisconsin important? Because it's a battleground state. What this says to me is that Democrat voters in, uh, in Wisconsin, a fair number of them, are not real thrilled about, about voting for Joe Biden. That means they may not go to the polls, that they're not enthused about the election, maybe sit on their hands, do nothing. Or they might actually, some of them might decide to go a different direction uh, and vote for the Republican option or or somebody in the middle, an independent like RFK, which, again, any vote that you take away from Biden helps Trump. So, again, it's interesting that about about 8% of the total outcome voted basically say, somebody else, please, please, can you just, can you give us another choice? We don't like this choice. The Republicans have been way behind in raising money uh, for the coming election. But listen to this. Donald Trump and Republican National Committee raised $65.6 million in March, a figure his allies hope will ease concerns about the amount in his war chest as the former president's accounts have been drained because of mounting legal fees. Trump has spent more than $100 million on lawyers, and other costs related to indictments, various probes, and criminal trials. That's that's the purpose. One of the purposes of doing that, I'm to him, is they're trying to take away uh, his money to run. Uh, Trump and money raised from large contributions, small individual donations under 200. Uh, President Donald Trump has again created a fundraising juggernaut among Republicans. While he has been the presumptive nominee for the, less than a month, the RNC and Trump campaign are one unified operation focused on victory. Says. New RNC chairman, Michael Watley. Um, this story out of Nevada, the Nevada Senate race is now deemed to be a toss-up. It was a, it was a, um, it was a lean Democrat. In the Cook political report, uh, the, the one involving, um, I got to get the names here, uh, Jackie Rosen, I think it is, and, uh, and uh, here he goes. The group particularly cited Jackie Rosen's lack of an established brand, noting it could make it more difficult for the Nevada Democrat to overcome Biden's unpopularity on her own. Trump is winning Nevada. Jackie Rosen is running for re-election, but apparently they say there's such a transient population in Nevada that a lot of people don't know her. They're, she's new to them. And, you know, they, they, uh, they're very interested uh, to make a decision, but apparently because of that, the Cook Political Report now takes it from leans Democratic to toss-up. I think our chances of doing well in the Senate this coming election are pretty good. I like, I like, my, I like our chances. Story from Politico, which says that uh, Vice President's uh, search for Trump is getting serious. All I can tell you, uh, if you're hearing names, it ain't going to be any of them, said one Trump ally. Um, there's a, a football coach who's been mentioned. Uh, I forget the man's name, but somebody that, that uh, Trump encountered. Kellyanne Conway said that Trump should choose someone who can help him win and govern and not be a distraction as he tries to expand his reach to minority voters, women, and political independents. Specifically, she said Trump should select someone who can speak about abortion with conviction and compassion and articulate what it means to be a pro-life Republican. Unlike Democrats who are stuck with a wildly unpopular president and a vice president, 
Trump has an embarrassment of riches. One name that is mentioned in this article that you may not have heard before, Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio. And if, you, if you've seen him on camera, he's impressive. He's impressive. He handles himself quite well. I, I still think it's probably going to be Tim Scott. I think there's a lot to like about Tim Scott. And uh, given the fact that uh, we do have a, a decided movement of blacks and Hispanics into the Republican column for this election, it seems, uh, that would only perhaps enhance that number. And every uh, black voter that you take away from Joe Biden and bring over to the Republican column is, is a victory. It really is. And uh, he's, you know, Biden is losing black, Hispanic and young voters. I mean, I, I, if I'm if I'm a Democrat, and I'm not, but if I were a Democrat, I would be hard pressed to go through the news of the day and find any ray of sunshine. There's not much out there that that is going on in that regard. Nothing on their side is as good a news as that we're getting on our side. Finally, uh, there was a um, an interview done a while back by Sage Steele, uh, who was a former host of the Sports Center on ESPN. Sage Steele, quite she's quite good. Uh, she revealed that her 2021 interview with President Biden was tightly scripted by her bosses. Um, that was an interesting experience in its own right, because it was so structured. And I was told, you will say every word that we write out. You will not deviate from the script and go to the word. Like every single question was scripted, gone over dozens of times by many executives, editors and executives. Absolutely. I was on script and was told not to deviate because it was very much, this is what you will ask. This is how you will say it. Um, no follow-ups, no follow-ups next. This went up to the fourth floor, as we said, that we're all the, the bosses, the top executives, the decision makers are the president we're, of our company, the CEO, where, where they all worked. Um, the big picture to me is that I think it's heartbreaking. I think it's really heartbreaking that the people who love Joe Biden and say they truly care about him have allowed it to get to this point. So I'm not even looking at this from a political angle or my beliefs in anything. This is the human side of it. And when someone is struggling, um, we allow them to continue to be in the spotlight and put them out there in the first place when they knew there were issues. Of course, they had to know. So it's it, it's a it's a humanity thing with me. Sage Steele, the bosses worked over every question. She was told, do not deviate, no follow-ups. That tells you what's going on, you know, in, in the mainstream media these days. Uh, they, you know, they, 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 they do not want anything left to chance. These things are being scripted. And I would, I would argue probably, probably uh, negotiated ahead of time with the, the Biden campaign. 31 past the hour now, time for news. Four thirty. I'm Mac Mori with your top stories. Fifty three degrees in Nashville. Got a windy day. Rain expected on and off throughout the rest of this afternoon into the evening. Forecast traffic report just ahead in five minutes. Severe weather slowing crews from clearing the main channel into Baltimore Harbor after last week's key bridge collapse. Andy Field. Crews say it's treacherous, untangling bridge wreckage in good weather, but divers are now dealing with several storm fronts around Baltimore. That thunderstorm coming through, so we've had to pull the divers out. But once it's safe to do so, we'll get them back in the water and continue diving on those operations. Rear Admiral Shannon Gilreath says they're working to unload ship containers and safely move it to clear a path back to the port of Baltimore. It's part of the same storm system that Tennessee felt a little bit of yesterday. Some neighbors here to the volunteer state, not as fortunate. Kentucky being one of them, one person died after severe storms there, multiple Multiple tornadoes touched down in the state. Governor Andy Bashir had to declare a state of emergency in that storm system. Again, farther east, New England, the Carolinas, snow in the forecast up in the northeast. Now to some money news. Daria Albinger, actually, this will be Chuck Sievertston bringing you the news from Wall Street. The major indexes are mostly higher after Wednesday's close. The Dow down 43, the broader S&P 500 index up 6, the Nasdaq up 37. Treasury yields eased after a report said growth for U.S. services businesses cooled last month. The Federal Reserve will likely reduce their benchmark interest rate later this year, says Fed Chair Jerome Powell. 
This after recent reports showing that the U.S. economy is still strong and that inflation picked up in January and February. In a speech at Stanford University, Powell says recent data doesn't change the overall picture of solid growth, a strong but rebalancing labor market, and inflation moving down toward the Fed's 2% goal on what Powell called a sometimes bumpy path. Disney shareholders have rallied behind longtime Chief Robert Iger, voting to rebuff an activist investor, Nelson Peltz, and his ally, former Disney Chief Financial Officer Jay Rusulo. And that is the latest news, traffic and weather on the way. I'm Mac Morey, WTN News. The guaranteed offer is the easiest way to sell your home. It's really simple. We bring you an all-cash offer. You close in as little as 21 days. No home inspections, no lockboxes, no open houses. Go to MarkSpain.com to get a guaranteed offer and start packing. Beacon Capital Management has their annual Shred Day Cummings. It's a Saturday, April 20th from 8 to 11 a.m. Right in their parking lot there on uh, in Franklin, uh, the area. You, you know it. You've been by it. Free document shredding. It's uh, April 20th from 8 to 11. Just bring anything that you want to shred. This follows a few days after tax day. So if you have some old documents laying around after you get through with paying your taxes, maybe you just drop over there and and shred them. Meanwhile, uh, you need you can need discover your retirement savings potential in less than thirty seconds with Beacon Capital Management's free retirement savings calculator. Uh, it's a simple step by step calculator. It's easy to use. You get your results in very short order, and then you can stop and think about: Are you doing the right things with regard to your retirement? And if you decide you need to do a deeper dive, that you need help, that you're behind, why don't you give them a call at six one five four eight eight nine three zero three. Yeah, they get some information from you. You have really nothing to lose in this process except for the worry you have about your retirement. So again, 615-488-9303. Replace the worry with confidence that you're on the right path and let the experts at Beacon take your stress away. Learn more at askbeaconnow.com. What an absolute mess. Hey, it's Dan Manderson. Look at my closets. Unorganized to say the least. Even my window dormer is a train wreck. Stuff is everywhere. Now, luckily, California Closets is coming to my rescue. My personal design consultant, Vince, stopped by, measured, and is now showing me how to become more space efficient and organized on his 3D CAD system. It is amazing. And soon, my space is going to be organized. And yes, even Bandit approves. California Closets, a local company that can customize the storage in any room of your house. California Closets, what can they do for you? Find them online at CaliforniaClosets.com and reach out for your free in-home consultation.
It's uh, 39 minutes now past the hour of 4 o'clock. We're running a little bit behind, and I apologize to Pete Hegseth, who is always on time, always reliable. As the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, you can count on Pete Hegseth to be here at 435 most of the weeks uh, when he's not traveling and not doing other stuff. Pete Hegseth, of course, the host of the Fox & Friends Weekend Edition, and also a guy who lives in Sumner County, Tennessee, when he's not, uh, you know, out there at the mothership of Fox News. <laughs> how, how has, I'm just curious, you know, it's been, I haven't been to the mothership in years, obviously, uh, but I, I'm just curious, how have things changed in television post-COVID? I mean, I, I, I get the impression from watching a lot of Fox News that, that a lot of people are, are broadcasting like I do from their homes. Oh, it's a great question, Brian. COVID did change a lot. I mean, before COVID, one or two, you know, if you weren't Sean Hannity, you didn't have a studio at your house. You know? <laughs> uh, and now because of COVID, it became a necessity. And so for someone like me, it gave me the opportunity to host in New York during the weekend, but then be home in Tennessee during the week and do, I did three hits on Fox today from my house. Uh, right. So it's a wonderful luxury. I, but for ensemble shows like Fox and Friends, it's pretty much the same. It, you find it almost exactly the same, except there are less camera operators. They're all robots now. And so it's a kind of lonely in some of these sets. There's you and your co-hosts and maybe one other person, whereas it used to be crews of people in there, right, yeah. running the cameras and running everything. But same, same operation. I, I remember when they brought in the robot cameras when I was working at Fox 5 in Washington. And, uh, and one day the, the robot camera just decided they have, they have a place in the corner of the studio that they call home. It's a, they put a metal strip in the, on the floor, and the robots yep. know to go to that metal strip when they're done at the end of the day. And right in the middle of the show, right in the middle of the show, all the robots, for some reason, <laughs> decided to go home. <laughs> and so, you know, you're, you're in the middle of reading a story and you're just sort of, you know, trying to stay with the camera. And just, wait, 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 come back, please. But uh, <laughs> it's happened. Those cameras will just spin sometimes. You go, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, honestly, it really, I, I'm fascinated by this. I hope nobody minds me asking these questions. How in the world do they do it now? Is it, is it uh, all internet, internet based? And, and, uh, and they have, I, I, I well, guess you can actually like walk out with a little box and plug in your camera and somehow through the cell phones, uh, your signal gets back to Washington. That's all changed, too, Brian. You're exactly right. It used to be you needed a satellite truck to do right. remote. Now it's called a live view, and it's smaller than a backpack. And so you can have a producer with a backpack on, pushes a couple buttons, has a small little hand camera, and you've got Fox News quality. That's how they do all the stuff on the border. It's just a backpack and a camera. So it's really a two-man operation, really simple. And, and you know, it's light and mobile and quick and relatively inexpensive compared to a truck and renting and coordinating and scheduling all of that. It's they've streamlined it a lot. Yeah, and and it makes for better coverage because your 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 ability to go places and project to get crews live crews into the field is remarkable. Well, enough of that. Yes. I just am fascinated by that because since I got out of television, the technology really dramatically changed, and a lot of it has to do with uh, being able to broadcast a a a picture across a cell phone connection, which is Brian, just... let's get a beer sometime soon here. We'll chat through the whole thing. I would love to. I'd like to know how it's done. I'm fascinated by it. All right, so, uh, you know, this is the time of, of, of uh, an election cycle where it's sort of, uh, there's a sameness to the reporting. You know, we, we've, we've decided who our nominee is going to be. That was really no big surprise. But now we've got to wait for the conventions for it to be formal and, and go through the process of having all these primaries that really don't matter at this point because we are... Uh, and so you have to look hard to find new angles. I guess the big question for for Republicans and conservatives is, who is Trump going to pick as his vice president, and when will that happen? I think he's going to string it out. You know, he's a TV guy. He likes the drama. He doesn't want to lock himself into a dynamic in April that's maybe different in June or July. Republican convention is not until July. So what we think we know what the race will look like, Brian. But we definitely don't. Anything could happen oh, in the next right. three months. And so you wouldn't want to lock yourself in to somebody who you think shores you up in a particular way, but then the whole race changes. I also think he likes the drama. I think he likes drawing it out. He'll want the tryout, and he'll want people interviewing. So I, I, who knows which way he'll go. But I think he'll string it out all the way to the convention. I don't know if it's ever been done after the convention. I think you need a duo by then. So I would, I would expect it close to then. I, I want to, but I, if I were to twist your arm and say, okay, but make a guess. Uh, my, I'll give you my pick. 
I would like to see him pick Tulsi Gabbard, um, the former Democrat turned independent, army vet, anti-woke, anti-endless uh, you know, wars, really articulate, could bring in some of the middle. I think she's loyal. I've talked to her about I, – I think she'd be great. I don't know if he'll do that. Otherwise, you know, I think there are a lot of conventional picks like a Tim Scott that are there. Uh, but I – I don't know. No one really sticks out to me as a game changer, uh, and and there are some that seem fine, but it'll depend on what the race looks like. Whether he thinks he can pick someone that'll steady the ship or help out, shore up a little something, or whether he need to, needs to change it up. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Uh, Tim Scott would be, I think, a good choice. It is a, sort of the guy I think he might go to, given the fact that he's doing so well at taking black and Hispanic voters. And by the way, uh, the, the new polling suggests uh, that he's taken away young voters in a pretty dramatic way. But it seems like that Tim Scott would be a, a guy who might help in that regard. Tulsi Gabbard is an interesting candidate, isn't she? I mean, I, I see her on TV, and one thing I notice is, you know, when you watch somebody on TV, you either, you know, sort of glance up and pay half attention, or you lock in. And every time I see her on screen, I just am, I just lock in. I, I'm fascinated by the way she presents herself and the way she handles herself on the screen. I think it'd be an interesting choice. I agree. I I know that she would love it. Uh, she turned down RFK. She obviously left the Democrats. She's moved in a lot of her positions. And here's the other dynamic why I think she works. Trump is not going to want to pick a running mate who would overshadow him on day one, where the conversation would be, okay, Trump's a short-termer. What's the future of the Republican Party in 2028? And that's why I never thought um, Ramaswamy was a pick and somebody because it would be a shadow next presidency, and Trump would hate that. Tulsi Gabbard is not going to be the Republican nominee. I, I just don't see it in 28 or 32. She's she's too off on some of the issues that matter to a lot of our base. So she doesn't threaten Trump, and I think she would be ironclad in supporting him. Uh, just a thought. Just, a, just a, I mean, it could be too cute by half, but you can't have somebody who is going to want to be president while Trump's president or look forward because that won't go well. Yeah, I think I, that's a very good point. The other thing happening in Washington is is watching this uh, this tenseness between Republicans and the House of Representatives, where Marjorie Taylor Greene has uh, put up, you know, the the uh, call for uh, the, the head of the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. It's not something that apparently she wants to push forward right now. But gosh, the, the margins in the House of Representatives are so thin right now. It would seem like this would be a good time to try to get some unity going in the House of Representatives, but it is anything but unity. It seems like they're just squabbling among themselves. And, and you know, I, I, I'm, I'm baffled by how they have not been able to take advantage of the majority the way I thought they might. You're right. Uh, the margin's so small. I don't know what they're going to get. I. What I want right now is the type of leadership in the House that would really go to the mat for Trump should he win in November, and then a reversal in the Senate so you've got real support there. Then it really is put up or shut up. I mean, I'd, I'd like to say now is the moment to hold the ground. Certainly don't pass some foolish immigration bill that actually funds Ukraine. I mean, at least we held that off. But if they could pass and really force the Senate to have a referendum on H.R. 2, which I know they've done, but really make the conversation about that, that's useful. You just can't expect – there's no deficit and debt reduction that's going to happen under Mike Johnson. There's no actual serious legislation that we love that's going to you know, lead to the, Joe Biden's desk and have him sign it. The only hope is H.R. 2 because it's such a liability for Biden that if he signed the bill, he could say, I did it. I was willing. Uh, and that's a good thing because it's a great border bill. It's basically Trump's policies. Uh, otherwise, I don't think another food fight is really worth it, especially if, if Johnson will go to the mat when Trump wins. You seem to be a guy that's always on the on the move. What interesting projects you're working on right now? Uh, what are we? I got a book coming. Next time we talk next week, I'll announce a book I have coming out in June. Oh, which I'm good. Yeah, uh, really excited about it. And it, it's. Um, it pertains to my, my time in the military. So it's coming out in June, and remind me next week. Let's talk about it. I'll hit you up on it. I'll put, I'll put a note in my file. I look forward to it. And, again, always, I really do appreciate our time with you. Uh, thanks for taking the time out of – I know, you know, when you're home, you're, you're, you like to be with family. And, and, but I appreciate that you take a few moments to be with us well, each likewise. week when you're available. All right, 49 minutes. Here. All right, see you later. It's 49 minutes now past the hour, 4 o'clock.
Hey, it's Dan Mandison. I love my Patriot Supply. It's emergency food so you can care for your family no matter what. And today, we're fixing creamy chicken flavored rice. And the thing I love about my Patriot Supply, it's easy. You just get the water, turn on the heat, and in minutes, we are ready to go. Now, this food lasts for 25 years in special packaging. And yes, it does taste great. And in just minutes, it's ready to eat. Patriots don't rely on the government to take care of their family in emergencies. It's up to you. Order right now and get $200 off a three month food kit. It's important to go to preparewithmandis.com to get that great discount. That's preparewithmandis.com to get that great discount. Preparewithmandis.com. $200 off a three month food kit.
Weather slowing down that Baltimore bridge repair. An update on the search for Sebastian Rogers, a woman accused of stealing from veterans and the elderly, a car chase leading to an arrest in Nashville, and violence at a safari. Those stories at 5 on Super Talk, the 97 WTN. Uh, 56 minutes now past the hour. You know, we, uh, we are looking forward to next Monday, which is uh, the day that we will have the, the solar eclipse. In Nashville, about 90% uh, of the sun will be covered by the moon. Uh, and it happens about 2 o'clock in the afternoon or so, I think, as I recall. And, uh, you, you know, you can't look directly at it. you got to have special glasses. Uh, you, so be sure you do that if you're going to go out and look. at So it should get sort of dim in Nashville. And uh, I'm looking, though, at the, um, at the forecast. And, and for the last few days, they have said that Monday was going to be cloudy, which is, not, of course, not good if you want to see the eclipse. But now they've moved it to partly cloudy. Oh. So, you well, know, that's I, th- I think it's going to work out, you see, for Nashville. I'm, I'm going over to Henderson, Kentucky, uh, for the totality event. And I'm going to have clear skies the way it looks right now. Oh, that's good. I mean, you know, it's still a long way off, and the, and the cloud forecast can change. But they're right now saying clear skies. Very excited about that. So, uh, listen, be sure, though, listen, very important. You know, don't just count on your sunglasses. Go get some of those special glasses. You can get them at the grocery store. You can get them at the Lowe's. You can yeah, get them on Amazon. Yeah. I, I mean, I ordered a, a, a pack of 10 for practically nothing, and uh, they came right to my door. So there's still time to do that. But please uh, protect your eyes and do not directly look at the total eclipse of the sun uh, with the naked eye for sure. 57 minutes now past the hour, 4 o'clock on Super Talk 99.7. Hey, it's Dan Mandison. I love my Patriot Supply. It's emergency food so you can care for your family no matter what. And today, we're fixing creamy chicken flavored rice. And the thing I love about my Patriot Supply, it's easy. You just get the water, turn on the heat, and in minutes, we are ready to go. Now, this food lasts for 25 years in special packaging. And yes, it does taste great. And in just minutes, it's ready to eat. Patriots don't rely on the government to take care of their family in emergencies. It's up to you. Order right now and get $200 off a three-month food kit. It's important to go to preparewithmandis.com to get that great discount. That's preparewithmandis.com to get that great discount. Preparewithmandis.com, $200 off a three-month food kit. It is 5 o'clock. I'm Mac Morey with your top stories. Right now, 52 degrees. Been a windy day on and off rain throughout this afternoon. It'll stay the same as we head into this evening. Cold front has hit the mid-state as well. Lows in the 40s tonight. Got lows in the 30s the rest of this week until we head into the weekend. Traffic and a complete weather forecast headed your way in five minutes. Severe weather slowing crews from clearing the main channel into Baltimore Harbor after the key bridge collapse. Andy Field brings us the latest. Divers and welders working long hours between spring storms to clear debris and safely move the ship that collapsed Baltimore's Key Bridge. We need to lift those undamaged containers off to give us space to safely operate to begin to 
plan to remove portions of the bridge that are also now embedded into the ship. Rear Admiral Shannon Gilry saying bad weather has slowed the recovery. Back here in Middle Tennessee, an update on the search for Sebastian Rogers, TBI Special Agents, the Sumner County Sheriff's Office, and multiple trained search teams from surrounding counties are conducting a ground search today to find the 15-year-old autistic boy missing from his Hendersonville area home since late February. Authorities say the search effort today will be focused in that Long Hollow Pike area. A New York City woman accused of stealing rent money from veterans, the elderly, and the disabled, Dave Packer reports. While managing rent-stabilized apartments in Harlem, prosecutors say Shatina Howell stole thousands between 2021 and last year by depositing rent payments into her personal bank accounts. When in 2022 the management company uncovered the fraud, Howell went to work for a different management company where prosecutors allege she continued the scheme, stealing 50 money orders from 19 tenants. Total take, say prosecutors, $56,000. Howell has pleaded not guilty. Crime in Tennessee. Channel 4 reports that following a car chase, a woman was arrested by Metro Police as she wanted as she is wanted for multiple store thefts along with domestic violence charges. 23-year-old Kalanza Broyles was seen driving yesterday afternoon and was spotted. After trying to stop her with a vehicle, they opted to a helicopter and they, until they deployed spike strips, they took her into custody. During Broyles' arrest, officers found her two-month-old daughter and two-year-old son in the back seat. The girl was in a car seat but not secured, while the boy was without a car seat altogether. She's estimated to have stolen over $45,000 worth of merchandise. And an 80-year-old American woman was killed by a bull elephant while on a game drive at Kafu National Park in Zambia on Saturday. The safari company that the woman was traveling with says another female guest was also hurt. James Longman in London says video of the incident shows the elephant pursuing the vehicle that that woman was in. You can tell that those inside the cart know something is up. It looks like the elephant is chasing this cart. You can hear voices on board. The guide uh, seems like he knows that there, there is an issue. And, and the elephant looks like it's chasing them. We know that the elephant picked this cart up twice, smashed it down uh, on the ground, and very sadly, uh, an 80-year-old woman, an American tourist, was killed. And that is the latest news, traffic and weather on the way. I'm Mac Morey, WTN News. What an absolute mess. Hey, it's Dan Manderson. Look at my closets. Unorganized to say the least. Even my window dormer is a train wreck. Stuff is everywhere. Now, luckily, California Closets is coming to my rescue. My personal design consultant, Vince, stopped by, measured, and is now showing me how to become more space efficient and organized on his 3D CAD system. It is amazing. And soon, my space is going to be organized and, yes, even banded approved. California Closets, a local company that can customize the storage in any room of your house. California Closets, what can they do for you? Find them online at CaliforniaClosets.com and reach out for your free in-home consultation.
Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's seven minutes past the hour of five o'clock, hour number three of The Drive. That's right. We're already more than halfway through the program, and I'm just getting started. Hey, man, I'm telling you, beautiful blue skies out there, but still a bit chilly. Uh, here in Bucolic Watertown, 54 degrees uh, and, and similar temperatures around the area uh, after that little storm we had last night. I, I think, honestly, when you, when you look at everything that we've been warned about, uh, the warnings were not were – not, uh, what I I think you know, what I'm trying to say is it was justified to make those warnings. A lot of people say, well, we didn't yeah. really have that much. It didn't turn into much for us. Well, but it did for people north of us and it did for people south of us. But through the grace of God, the, the middle Tennessee area was spared uh, any real serious damage uh, by these storms, but it could have just as easily gone the other way. And so, you know, I always pick on the weather people for, you know, when they get it wrong. But you know, you have to you have to go with your best guess on things like that, and and then you at the end of the day, if you're wrong, you just go, well, we've dodged a bullet. Yeah, you definitely want to over be uh, have people over prepared and expecting the worst rather than under situation. Like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. An abundance of caution. Yeah, uh, you know, I I do think, well, I I don't know if I want to get into that. I do think sometimes whether people do hype things like snow. You know, uh, well, you know, and, uh, it get might ready. happen. Yeah, yeah it, it happens, and I think you know why. I think uh, anytime you say the S word uh, on TV during the winter, people are going to be watching TV. It brings eyeballs to the screen. That's so true. I, I do think that sometimes they play that little game, uh, you know, and uh, and make us worry when there's really not that much to worry about in most cases. But but I think when you're talking about thunderstorms and tornadoes and that kind of stuff. You got to be pretty serious about it. I think we got real lucky. I think it uh, could have been a lot worse. And certainly other parts of the country, I was watching the, the news this morning. There were tornadoes everywhere, hail everywhere, high winds. I mean, man, the whole, the whole, the whole group of things that you expect in that kind of weather, it did happen. It just didn't happen here. Thank goodness. Um, I want to go to the Trump trial world because uh, there's, that's a, you, you need a, a scorecard to keep up with everything that's going on in this particular realm. Uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is the um, the so-called hush money case. Um, this is this is um, a situation where Trump is indicted with 34 counts of falsifying business records in order to pay former porn actress Stormy Daniels $130,000 to remain silent about the alleged extramarital affair ahead of the 2016 election. Uh, acting Judge Supreme Court Justice Juan Merchant who is overseeing the trial, expanded a gag order on Trump after he criticized the judge and his daughter in a series of uh, posts on X, or I guess it was actually Truth Social. Um, I'm, 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 I, I look at these cases, and I see them starting to develop problems one by one, and problems that are you know bad for the prosecution and helpful to uh, Donald Trump. In this particular case, the gag order is, is the optics are bad. And the other thing about it is it's it, according to Jonathan Turley, who I have a great deal of regard for in his, his, his legal acumen. Uh, he seems to think that this uh, at its heart is a very, very weak case. This is a very weak case. In my view, it is weaponization of the system. And now you have these gag orders flying right before an election that could turn on the weaponization of the criminal justice system. So this could not be worse for our country. And I think these judges have gone too far. Yeah, I think that's true. And, 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 and again, it does feed into this narrative that there, there is, a, there is a, a weaponization of the legal system aimed at Donald Trump in a way that we have never seen before. In other words, for political purposes, these cases are being brought and run through the judicial system. And in, in many of these cases, I think they do find a judge who is willing to be sympathetic to the, the, the plight, uh, the, the cause, uh, left-leaning judges. And it's, it's not right. And I think people are seeing that uh, as we go forward. Now, uh, the other one uh, that I think is interesting is uh, the, the, the documents trial. You know, the Mar-a-Lago raid. Uh, did he, uh, did the president, uh, former president have uh, documents he shouldn't have had, or was he protected under the presidential uh, records act? Uh, this, this is not going well right now for Jack Smith, the special counsel. Uh, he threw something of a prosecutorial hissy fit, uh, in a, <laughs> in a filing that he, he put with the court, uh, from, uh, just the news.com. 
Special Counsel Jack Smith criticized the federal judge overseeing former President Donald Trump's classified documents trial as relying on a fundamentally flawed legal premise that would distort the trial when she ordered both parties to submit jury instructions. You know, this is this is done early on. Uh, you, know, you know, if we, as we get to the end of the trial, what instructions do you think we should have for the jury? The judge then makes a decision on that. And both sides have been asked to submit jury instructions for her consideration, or for his consideration. Sharp's, uh, S- uh, Smith's sharp response Tuesday comes after Florida-based U.S. District Judge, I guess it is her, Aileen Cannon, last month asked attorneys to submit instructions based on two scenarios. In the first one, the jury would consider whether Trump's le- uh, allegedly possessed illegal documents are personal or presidential under the Presidential Records Act. The second scenario would assume that the president's that the Presidential Records Act gives the president and the sole authority to categorize records as personal or presidential during his time in office, which would make the case significantly more difficult to prosecute. Uh, with while Trump attorneys approved of Cannon's proposal, Smith's office they just blew up. He's just angry. He says that Trump is being charged under the Espionage Act, which bans national difference documents from being willfully retained the distinction between personal and presidential records should not apply so what it seems like here is the judge is giving um giving trump's people sort of a break here and saying that you know these are the uh these are the kinds of instructions that i want that that we they would like to have put forward to the jury and the judge is at least considering it cannon uh i'm sorry the other guy jack smith is just throwing a fit about it just throwing an absolute fit. Maybe so I can find a better story. Um, here we go. Special counsel Jack Smith aired frustration at U.S. District Judge Eileen Cannon, arguing she's giving credence to a fundamentally flawed legal premise from former President Trump that the classified documents recovered from his Florida home were his personal property. The filing Tuesday night comes as Cannon has asked both sides to propose jury instructions that would take into account Trump's view of of the Presidential Records Act, which dictates how records created during a president's term must be handled and later archived. The law does allow for some records to be considered personal property of the president, but some legal experts have rebuffed Trump's argument that he that the more than 300 highly classified records recovered from his property could in any way be considered personal. See, I, I, I think this is a weak case in many ways because it seems to me, I remember very much when one day... Obama was president, and he said something on the fly. Cameras and reporters were present. And and in retrospect, the thing that he said was probably uh, revealing classified information. In a way, actually, some people thought it might have impacted sources and methods. And there was a big hue and cry. You know, he's, he's, given, away, he's given away secrets, and he ought to be charged with it. And the argument at that time was, Well, the president of the United States is the ultimate receiver. He's the ultimate customer of intelligence from the intelligence community. It is all really designed to flow to him. And he can, on the fly, on on a whim or, or a considered notion, he can declassify things at will. If he decides to declassify it, he's the only person that has the absolute unfettered authority to do that the president of the United States. There have been cases where uh, in the Bush administration, I remember there was uh, there was some kind of classified conversation that was happening in the briefing room. And they got to a point where somebody in the room was not read in or didn't have the right classifications to stay and hear the information. And Bush on the fly said, I hereby give him the authority to hear this information. And, and, and by doing so, he was well within his rights as president. So, I mean, this is not a clear-cut case. This is absolutely not a clear-cut case. And remember that a president is the ultimate determiner of what is classified and what is not. And he does have the ability, in some cases, to consider some of these records uh, as his personal records. So this is not open and shut. And Jack Smith is not getting the kind of uh, cooperation from this particular judge uh, that he hoped he would. And again, when you look at each of these cases, Fannie Willis case, that whole thing is devolved. 
you know, and, and you hear people say, well, there are 91 indictments against this guy. Well, a lot of those 91 have been dropped already in some cases. And, and the other cases, as they are lining up, and as Trump's attor- attorneys get in there and make their, their arguments, remember, the first thing you hear when a case is filed is you're hearing the position of the prosecutor, always. Always, when a case is filed, it, it is what the prosecutor believes he can or cannot prove. All right, so you're getting the news and the information from the prosecutor's uh, position. There's been an indictment uh, brought by and led by this particular prosecutor. It's not until the other person's attorneys get into the thing and start questioning things that you begin to consider and you hear about, well, there's another side to this story. And I think as Trump's people, his lawyers are very good. As they get into this thing and they start working these cases one by one by one, methodically starting to knock down many of the premises that have been laid out for these trials, finding out that there are problems, there are biases, there are all kinds of issues surrounding uh, this argument that has been brought against him. Well, then things start to look a little brighter for Donald Trump. Now, I don't know how he's going to if he's going to be able to beat all these reps, because it seems to me uh, that, that the whole system is sort of slanted against him. He's got in some cases. You know, uh, he's got uh, people who are not only uh, very liberal prosecutors, but you have judges that are willing to go along with it. Will he win then on appeal? Yeah, but how long does that take? The one thing that I will say is that most of these cases that we're hearing now are being dragged out in such a way as that they may not be considered at all before the election in November, which is a big win for Donald Trump because once he becomes uh, the president-elect, then they really can't bring any charges against him until the whole thing is over. He's protected. So, you know, that's why they're pushing hard to do this now. And all of these things are back-timed, or were initially back-timed, to have an impact right now as we run up to the conventions and then from the conventions on to the final day of Election Day. They, they wanted to have all of this noise and clutter and cases and allegations and uh, and and fiery charges all being discussed while you are trying to decide who's going to be the next president of the United States. It's not working out so well for them in many cases. And, and as we get deeper and deeper and deeper into it, a lot of the weaknesses of these cases are finally coming to light and being reported on. And it, it seems to me that, you know, it was not as dire as we get deeper into it, not as dire as it may one as one time appear. And I think I think he's going to beat a lot of this. I think a lot of these cases are, are not going to uh, turn out quite the way the prosecutors had hoped. And people, one way or the other, even if there are convictions, I think people, one way or the other, have decided that the system is being weaponized and it is being used against Donald Trump in a very unfair way. And one thing I know about American voters, they don't like an unfair situation. They believe in fairness uh, as, a, as a major principle of our legal system. And if you look at some of these cases, they are anything but fair, and I think voters have figured that out. 20 minutes now past the hour of 5 o'clock on Super Talk 99.7. All right, uh, busy bee, busy bee, when you need cold or hot AC, or what is it, hot, when you need heat or cold AC, that's seven seven five seven eight three three. I wrote that jingle. You think I can remember it? Uh, listen, you listen. that's the time you call uh, busy bee if you got a problem with your air conditioner. We are headed into warmer climes, a little warmer temperatures, and if you find that your air conditioner is not blowing cold, uh, what do you need to do? Call that number, 615-775-7833. And listen, you're never going to find a better value on an HVA system or plumbing system replacement than you will get at Busy B. Honestly, uh, the, the, you, these things are not made to last forever. And at some point, you may need to replace them. Think about Busy B for that. Then when it, you, uh, you want to become a member of the Beehive Club for as little as 99 bucks, get three thorough maintenance services on your systems, one aimed at heating, one aimed at cooling, one aimed at plumbing, no overtime charges 24-7, and 10% off all repairs. Busy Bee Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, your official Rude Pro partner for satisfaction guaranteed. Call Busy Bee Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, 615-775-7833 online at BusyBeeHVAC.com.
Hey, it's Dan Madison. I love my Patriot Supply. It's emergency food so you can care for your family no matter what. And today, we're fixing creamy chicken flavored rice. And the thing I love about my Patriot Supply, it's easy. You just get the water, turn on the heat, and in minutes, we are ready to go. Now, this food lasts for 25 years in special packaging. And yes, it does taste great. And in just minutes, it's ready to eat. Patriots don't rely on the government to take care of their family in emergencies. It's up to you. Order right now and get $200 off a three-month food kit. It's important to go to preparewithmandis.com to get that great discount. That's preparewithmandis.com to get that great discount. Preparewithmandis.com. $200 off a three-month food kit. News in the Israel-Hamas war. Lawmakers closer to requiring photo ID to look at porn on the internet here in Tennessee. And we have updates after a man crashed into a creek yesterday evening off of I-65. All at 5.30 on Super Talk 997 WTN. Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport. The thrill of victory. And the agony of defeat. That's right, it's time for Mac Morey's wide, wide, wild world of sports. And now, without further ado, you know him, you love him, you just can't live without him. The one, the only, Mac Morey, ladies and gentlemen. And the crowd goes wild. Oh, yeah. And it wasn't a day without some sports news. Uh, yeah, is it? It is. It, it, it was. There was a big There was a big blockbuster trade, which is what we'll, we'll get to Hang on, should we hear the stinger? right after the stinger. Okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. Let's get to business here. So, uh, yeah, pretty mild day in sports until, uh, I don't know, maybe 11 o'clock or so. Uh, this blockbuster trade hit from Adam Schefter. Uh, the Buffalo Bills are going to trade their star wide receiver, Stefan Diggs, to the Houston Texans. That's mm. AFC South rival to the Tennessee Titans, Houston mm. Texans. And, man, I'll tell you what, these Houston Texans have loaded up this offseason. They overperformed last year with that rookie quarterback, C.J. Stroud. They have some good young pieces. They said, you know what? We've got Stroud on a rookie deal. We don't have to pay him for three or four more years. Let's load up now. We've got the money. We've got the cap space. We've got some young talent. We can just 
build a full roster in one offseason. That's exactly what they've done. They've added great pass rushers. Their defensive line is deep. They've added multiple corners. They added, uh, you know, they kept a lot of their wide receivers and tight ends. They added two linebackers. They've really just shored up the whole defense. They shored up the offensive line. And now they have arguably the best wide receiver trio that will be head up by 30-year-old stud wide receiver Stephon Diggs. And, you know, it's it's one of those things where you're looking at the Titans, you're going, this was a fun offseason for the Titans. You know, pretty productive. Feel like they shored up lots of things yeah. on uh, the offense and the defense. Still need to add some depth. But, hey, the draft hasn't even happened two or three weeks away now from that. And you look at the, look at your division and you go, dang, we weren't even the best offseason within our division, let wow. alone the conference of the NFL, the Houston Texans. I mean, truthfully, when you talk about, you know, who can beat the Chiefs in the AFC, well, the Ravens and the Bengals are usually the first two teams. We used to be the Bills, but after this trade, it won't be. On the short list of teams, if you're not mentioning the Houston Texans, well, you're just not looking at the facts. That That's where they are now. They are a contender. Mm-hmm. After two years ago, they win, you know, what was it, three or four games. Yeah. They have the number two overall pick. They're the mm-hmm. laughing, stock, laughing, stock, laughing stock excuse me, of the whole National Football League. Here we are two seasons later, and they are a true Super Bowl contender. That is how wild the NFL is, and I believe that the Titans can be in that same position here next year. Why do you think they gave him up? Um, so the Buffalo Bills, he's 30. He's going to be 31, so he's not necessarily in his prime right now. And, I, I, I mean, they're eating $31 million in dead cap to get rid of him. This is the largest wow. dead money hit for a wide receiver in NFL history, or at least known dead money hit in, uh, for a wide receiver in NFL history. So they obviously wanted to get rid of him. I imagine that had to do with just – friction uh it was obvious at the last few weeks of the season Stefan Diggs is not one to hide his emotions and he was not happy no he was very unhappy on the sidelines and was outspoken about that and uh you even you see now coming out on Instagram uh yesterday he liked a comment that said you know is uh can Josh Allen who's the quarterback of the Bills can Josh Allen even produce without Stefan Diggs you know and he kind of liked that comment and then today the news comes out yeah he's Hmm. he's got some emotions for sure he's he's being a little petty about it and I think the Bills they just needed to cut ties. They've got to save some money on the cap, and they need to kind of look forward here and, and start building something new because this last four years was kind of – this was an era for the Bills, these last four years. Chances, this was right? a chance. They made yeah. an AFC championship game. They lost to the Chiefs three separate times in the playoffs, all three of which were nail biters, close games, and it just feels like, okay, we've got to kind of wrap things up, reset, and we still got Josh Allen. we still got a couple of pieces, but we've got to kind of clear the slate here. They made the AFC Championship four years ago. There's no one but Josh Allen on that team anymore. Wow. That's the only one Ooh. on the Bills that's left from that AFC Championship wow. game a few years ago. So, yeah, I think they just needed to cut ties. I think it was time. I don't like what they got back. This is a – so the Bills received a 2025 second-round pick, um, and then the Texans got a sixth-round pick this year and a fifth-round pick next year. So for a top-tier stud-wide receiver, they're getting a second-round pick. And they're and they're spending thirty one million dollars. Yeah. yeah, I always wonder though when somebody is is that difficult to deal with it. Oh yeah, one, are they going to have that kind of problem? You know, within a few weeks after he arrives in Houston, you never know. Hundred percent. That's a great mm-hmm. question. It's it's worth asking because you look at the Texans. They had chemistry. Everyone loves C.J. Stroud. There's no drama there. They've got a new head coach that everyone loves and is rallied around. Yeah, you don't want any cog in that wheel. And let's hope Diggs isn't there. Well, for the Titans, yeah. let's maybe hope that he is. Sometimes it all funny. it takes is a change of scenery for a guy, yeah, though. That's, that's right, yeah. though. I mean, you're exactly right. And sometimes, you know, you, for some reason, it's just the dynamics are not there. The yeah. human dynamics are not there. And getting a new start, you know, well, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm happy for the the, uh, the Houston Oil, uh, Houston Texans. I'm not happy for what it means for the Titans. <laughs> that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. All right, 30 minutes now past the hour. Time for the news. Five thirty-one. I'm Mac Mori with your top stories right now. Fifty-one degrees in Nashville, experiencing some rain on and off. Definitely a windier afternoon as we head into this evening. Low of forty-one, and in that cold front has hit the mid-state. We've got lows of thirty the rest of this week after tonight. Latest traffic report and a weather forecast in five minutes. The U.S. State Department says the deaths of seven aid workers in Gaza should have never happened. The aid workers were a part of World Central Kitchen, run by Chef Jose Andres. 
They're calling for an Israeli investigation into what happened to be done as soon as possible. Perry Russom is in Washington. The Israeli government says they misidentified vehicles in the deadly Gaza airstrike, killing seven aid workers from World Central Kitchen. The State Department says it doesn't matter what the Israelis were intending to do. What matters is what they did. Spokesman Matthew Miller. We are looking for them to do two things. One, to conduct a full, swift, and transparent investigation. And if that investigation shows that accountability is appropriate, then there, of course, should be accountability. President Biden says he's outraged and heartbroken over their deaths. Back here in Tennessee, lawmakers closer to requiring photo ID to look at porn on the Internet. News 2 reports it has a bipartisan support on the way to the full Senate floor. Memphis Democrat State Rep G.A. Hardaway says... It's needed to protect kids. We can't be with them 24 hours a day. We know that we're the vehicle which is supposed to vet uh, what comes into their lives, especially in terms of uh, the emotional and and sexual uh, exposure that comes with uh, pornography. Language in the bill says porn websites would keep a person's data for seven years, but not names and addresses. Here in Tennessee, we discussed a man who crashed into a creek yesterday evening off of I-65 in Marshall County. The vehicle flipped over and landed upside down on the edge of Richland Creek. It took a while, but they were able to rescue him by cutting off the door of that vehicle. The driver was responsive but bruised and scratched up. He was taken to a local hospital for treatment. His condition, his condition is not yet available, and the Tennessee Highway Patrol now conducting an investigation into that crash. That is the latest news. Weather, traffic next. I'm Mac Morey, WTN News. What an absolute mess. Hey, it's Dan Manderson. Look at my closets. Unorganized to say the least. Even my window dormer is a train wreck. Stuff is everywhere. Now, luckily, California Closets is coming to my rescue. My personal design consultant, Vince, stopped by, measured, and is now showing me how to become more space efficient and organized on his 3D CAD system. It is amazing. And soon, my space is going to be organized. And yes, even Bandit approves. California Closets, a local company that can customize the storage in any room of your house. California Closets, what can they do for you? Find them online at californiaclosets.com and reach out for your free in-home consultation.
You know, Grace Point Healthcare is the standard for affordable, comprehensive, and convenient medicine. How? Well, as a direct pay provider, your health care is delivered without the red tape of an insurer's guidelines. Smart care plans make it even more affordable, and they start at $69 a month. Here's what you get. Free office visits and basic labs for the entire year. Think about that. What a deal that is. Grace Point identifies and treats the root cause of a condition, not just the symptoms, through a comprehensive functional approach. And by seeing you usually the same day or the next day, you're treated at your convenience. Grace Point Healthcare, affordable, comprehensive, and convenient medicine delivered the old-fashioned way. They are on Main Street in Franklin, 615-599-6868. Again, 599-6868 to set up an appointment. It's uh, 38 minutes now past the hour. Uh, starting, it's still chilly outside. 54 degrees here in Bucolic Watertown. Partly cloudy skies. Had a few showers that have passed through the area today, but nothing like last night. And thank goodness we dodged all those bullets. We had really a lot of luck with regard to that because I think north of here, serious problems. South of here, serious problems. Middle Tennessee, uh, we just seem to be blessed and have been missed by the major bad weather that had been predicted. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the economy you know, if if you just allow the free market to do its thing, things generally go so much better. The free market, I mean, really, honestly, this whole uh, system, our economy that was set up by, in the early days, by Alexander Hamilton. Really, people, young people, if you like to see that show, Hamilton, you thought that was a good show? You really, you really should get to know more about what Alexander Hamilton did with regard to setting up the economic engine that uh, is the envy of the world. And, you know, and, and all we have done in recent years is try to, you know, change what has worked so many years for America to make it a very bountiful and rich country. No, we, we got to mess around with it. And there are some immutable laws uh, of the economy that just uh, that that always come into play. And it seems I'm shocked, stunned, and amazed that in, in some places they they can't quite figure this out. California. I saw a story today that because they have raised the minimum wage to twenty bucks an hour, uh, a lot of fast food places have had to do what? What are they going to do? Are they going to absorb that out of the goodness of their heart? No. Are they are they going to um, you know? Let people go? Yeah, maybe. Are they going to try to do more with fewer people? You bet. So service will suffer. And and then at the end of the day, they will also have to increase the cost of the product that they manufacture or produce. There's just no other way around it. The biggest expense in any business is your labor cost. It doesn't matter uh, you know, what business you're in. Almost always, your, your largest expenditure is of your people. And so when you, you say, well, now we're going to have to spend a minimum of $20 an hour for fast food workers, um, you know, that, that starts to hurt. I saw a story today where in California, if you want a Whopper combo, you know, a drink, some fries, and a, and a, and a Whopper, 15 bucks. You know, again... Let the market decide what the, what what a good salary should be, um, and you know it, it, I think quite frankly in most of these places it's probably approaching you know fifteen bucks in, an hour in some places. I know I I, I was shocked, stunned, and amazed a uh, couple of two or three years back when my daughter was working in a fast food place and because he was getting ready to go off to college, and it was it was astonishing what she was making. I said, man, it's that's pretty good. I didn't make that kind of money when I was a kid. That's for sure. Uh, I think. I think when I was working, I think I'm correct in saying the minimum wage was two seventy five. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, big money. Yeah, yeah. Work all day, like you might be able to buy a pizza. Um. Anyway, uh, so there, things are going to go up as a result of that. And again, if you just let the market do what it needs to do, remember, you know if. If you're looking at fast food as your career, then I can understand why you'd be excited about a twenty year, a twenty dollar an hour job. 
but you know, these jobs are not meant to be career jobs. I mean, maybe for the managers they can be, but I mean, for the people who are just out there just flipping the burgers, it's never going to be, is, is that what you aspire to? Is that, is that your final goal in life is to be a burger flipper? You know, honestly, uh, they are a launching pad for people to get in and learn something about, about money and how to make it and how to earn it, uh, learn some skills, move on, get an education, try to do better by yourself. That's, that's what these jobs are supposed to be. They're not supposed to be career jobs. And, and if that is then, you know, okay, well, how did you get yourself in a position where this was your only option? What did you do along the way? Were those decisions yours? Yes, they were. You made all of them. And so, you know, you, you got, you've got to make good decisions and then let the economy do its thing. Tesla shares fell nearly 9% in the first quarter. Uh, and then it was a surprise to a lot of people. But it, it really is in sync, not with anything that's going on so much at Tesla as what is going on worldwide as people have considered whether or not they want to drive electric cars. By and large, I think we have seen people who want to buy electric cars. I think most of them have bought electric cars. And those who do not uh, are not going to, you know, just suddenly switch. They're happy with what they got. Uh, sales, and that, and this is true. This has been true at Tesla. It's been true at GM. It's been true at Ford. It's been true at Stellantis. Electric cars are not selling the way that the Biden administration would like them to do. And Tesla is simply another example of that. Um, and there is, there, you know, there are a lot of vehicles out there you can choose. And by the way, if you want an electric car, not a bad time to get one. I just got a thing, you know, cause I, I drive an F-150. I just got a thing from Ford, an email you wouldn't believe the discounts on the Ford Lightning, which remember when they started talking about it, we were wondering if you could ever get one because they'd be so hot and so much in demand. Well, the demand has been met, and now there are a lot of Ford Lightning trucks sitting on the lot, and nobody wants to buy them. Um, and this is why, why is the Biden administration still trying to push this stuff? Again, let the market decide. The number one goal of Ford Motor Company ought to be to satisfy customers, to build a good product that will sell to customers and that customers can use and have some, some um, reliability built into it. That's what you want. You want a good, reliable piece of transportation. If you want a truck, you want something that's got enough energy, enough power uh, to do whatever you need to do a truck to haul, whatever it is. You, you need those things. Let those things decide the market. And let, and if electric if electric vehicles become good, and and we can have some reliability about you know when we get them charged and how long that's going to take and how far we can go on a charge when those things start to get to a better point and they will, then you know maybe people will just flood over and say well I don't think I want an uh, a, an internal combustion engine anymore. <laughs> I've heard that somebody said imagine if we'd started out because there was a time in the early going. When, when the, the, somebody came up with a small electric car that ran off of batteries, pretty good for its day. It was pretty good. You know, it wasn't going to take you on a, a cross country trip, but it would, it would get you to the grocery store and back and around town. And a lot of people liked it. What if it had turned out that we started with electric cars? And then one day somebody came along and said, there's this ama amazing thing. It's called the internal combustion engine. It's going to blow away anything that we now have out here. And you would, you would, you would then say, well, okay, well, that's a great idea. I want one of those. But electric cars are not where they need to be. And Tesla, I, I don't think I would read anything more to this about Tesla other than it is having the same impact uh, on sales. The, the, the market is having the same impact on sales for Teslas as they are for GM, Ford and Stellantis. Um, today, uh, we heard comments from uh, the Fed chairman, Jerome Powell. Um, he said, this is, a, this is the Wall Street Journal take on it. Powell sees room for the Fed to cut rates this year. Slowdown in wage growth eases worries that the economy is too hot. Stronger than anticipated economic activity this year hasn't materially changed the Federal Reserve's expectation that declining inflation will allow for an interest cut this rate this year. Jerome Powell said on Wednesday, Powell's son pointed to signs that the labor market conditions are less tight than they have been in recent years, which has eased concern that paychecks and prices might rise 
in tandem. CNBC had a, a slightly different take on it. Fed's Powell emphasizes the need for more evidence that inflation is easing before cutting rates. That's a very different take, isn't it? It will take a while for policymakers to evaluate the current state of inflation, keeping the timing for potential interest rate cuts uncertain. Speaking specifically about stronger-than-expected price increases, uh, to start this year, the central bank leader said he and his fellow officials are in no rush to ease monetary policy. My take, my sense of it, is that if interest rates start to go down dramatically and we haven't gotten to 2% inflation, which is what they said all along was what they wanted to have, 2% inflation, if we get, if we get to that point and we don't have – uh, we don't have the kind of uh, uh, inflation rate that we, we all wanted, then I wonder if they go ahead and cut interest rates, will it have a real impact or will it be political? Will it be a decision made because the economics of it are right? Or is it going to be one of those situations where uh, the economics are overlooked because they want the politics to be right? It is now 48 minutes past the hour of 5 o'clock on Super Talk 99.7. What an absolute mess. Hey, it's Dan Manderson. Look at my closets. Unorganized to say the least. Even my window dormer is a train wreck. Stuff is everywhere. Now, luckily, California Closets is coming to my rescue. My personal design consultant, Vince, stopped by, measured, and is now showing me how to become more space efficient and organized on his 3D CAD system. It is amazing. And soon, my space is going to be organized. And yes, even Bandit approves. California Closets, a local company that can customize the storage in any room of your house. California Closets, what can they do for you? Find them online at californiaclosets.com and reach out for your free in-home consultation.
Six o'clock, I'm Mac Morey with your top stories. 51 degrees in Nashville. And that cold front coming lows in the 40s tonight, lows in the 30s the rest of this week. Tonight we'll have wind and rain on and off. Traffic weather forecast, five minutes. Former President Donald Trump is not immune from prosecution in his New York hush money case, in part because he failed to invoke the defense in a timely fashion, ruled the judge in the case today. Aaron Katursky. He did not rule on the merits of Trump's argument about invoking presidential immunity as it would apply to the case here in New York. But he did say the defendant, meaning Trump, chose not to raise the defense of presidential immunity until well past the... And right now in Tennessee, Anton Rucker, the suspect in the Easter Sunday shooting at the Salem Town restaurant that ended the life of one and injured five others, has now been arrested in Kentucky. Officials located him at a home in Princeton, Kentucky. He'll be transported to Nashville to face charges. 46-year-old Rucker fled the scene in a Mercedes following that shooting. He was out of jail on a combined $50,000 bond for aggravated assault charges. 33-year-old Alan Beecham was the one killed in that tragedy. And more indication that rates for mortgages, cars, and personal loans, along with credit cards, will get cheaper this year. Chuck Sievertson. The Federal Reserve will likely reduce its benchmark interest rate later this year, says Fed Chair Jerome Powell. This after recent reports showing that inflation picked up in January and February. In a speech at Stanford University, Powell says recent data doesn't change the overall picture of solid growth, a strong but rebalancing labor market, and inflation moving down toward the Fed's 2% goal and what Powell called a sometimes bumpy path. In crime in Tennessee, News 2 reports 37-year-old Brett Barham was arrested yesterday morning after vandalizing multiple planters on the Broadway Bridge. A witness told officers that Barham threw a trash can at a passenger window before running away. The 76 planters that were knocked over were undamaged, but the plants and soil will need to be replaced. That could cost at least $3,800. His bond was set at $17,500. And that is the latest news. Traffic and weather on the way. I'm Mac Morey, WTN News. What an absolute mess. Hey, it's Dan Manderson. Look at my closets. Unorganized to say the least. Even my window dormer is a train wreck. Stuff is everywhere. Now, luckily, California Closets is coming to my rescue. My personal design consultant, Vince, stopped by, measured, and is now showing me how to become more space efficient and organized on his 3D CAD system. It is amazing. And soon, my space is going to be organized. And yes, even Bandit approves. California Closets, a local company that can customize the storage in any room of your house. California Closets, what can they do for you? Find them online at CaliforniaClosets.com and reach out for your free in-home consultation.
All right, hey, everybody, it's Brian Wilson coming to you from Bucolic Watertown, where we've had, I don't know, a major technical meltdown. What in the world has happened out there? I have no idea, but, uh, you know, we have uh, this really reliable technology that we use all the time. And uh, as I was throwing to uh, break uh, and talking about what time it was, gave the time check after the, well, I throw to the last story. It just went black. Everything went yeah. black here. So very strange. I, I didn't know anything had happened because you 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 threw to break and I went to break. But then when it came time for you to read your spot, you you didn't respond. So I was like, <laughs> "What's going on?" And then all of a sudden, you disappeared. You'll you'll forgive me if I'm a little harried because I've been running around here trying to figure out what was wrong. <laughs> and to this moment, I don't really know what happened. But I know right now, I'm having trouble. Uh, I can hear you, but I can't hear me which is hard because I feel like I'm talking into a big vacuum. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's just uh, let's uh, talk about some 2024 news. Got a lot of stuff we'd like to cover uh, in the 6 o'clock hour. Uh, let's start with a, a thing that happened uh, with uh, over on ESPN. I thought this was interesting. Uh, they, they can't trust Biden right now to go out and, and to do a good job, and yet they can't keep him holed up you know, somewhere and say, we're not going to be able to, uh, to have him on because, well, quite frankly, uh, we don't trust him. So they have to really orchestrate these, uh, these appearances so that they appear like they're spontaneous, but they're really not. And then uh, in 20, I guess it's 2021, uh, Sage Steele, who was a host over at ESPN's, one of their top shows has Biden on, and there's going to be an opportunity to ask him some questions. And this is what we found out from Sage Steele, that everything that they, uh, they set up was meticulously orchestrated in advance. Take a listen to how she explains it. Um, that was an interesting experience in its own right, because it was so structured. And I was told, you will say every word that we write out. You will not deviate from the script and go to the word, like every single question was scripted, gone over dozens of times by many executives, editors and executives. Absolutely. I was on script and was told not to deviate because it was very much, this is what you will ask. This is how you will say it. Um, no follow-ups, no follow-ups next. This went up to the fourth floor, as we said, <laughs> that we're all the, the bosses, the top executives, the decision makers are the president we're, of our company, the CEO, where, where they all worked. Uh, the big picture to me is that I think it's heartbreaking I think it's really heartbreaking that the people who love Joe Biden and say they truly care about him have allowed it to get to this point. So I'm not even looking at this from a political angle or my beliefs in anything. This is the human side of it. And when someone is struggling, um, we allow them to continue to be in the spotlight and put them out there in the first place when they knew there were issues. Of course, they had to know. So it's, it, it's a it's a humanity thing with me. I think she makes a, a very good point uh, is that, uh, you know, these things have to be meticulously orchestrated because he's just not up to having a, a, a real um, spontaneous interaction. He always comes off looking as if uh, he's lost a little puppy dog, doesn't want anything left to chance. I think that it's surprising, but I mean, not really. It, what has happening there is that the the Biden people are negotiating with her bosses and the word comes down. These are the questions that you're approved to ask. Do not deviate. So to understand that, that I have a, a pretty good feeling that anytime he appears in a so-called spontaneous interview, it's not all that spontaneous and uh, understandable uh, that uh, they want to protect him. But honestly, we're not getting a real sense of the man when he makes these appearance. All right. Uh, Trump's VP search starting to get very serious. Uh, former president considering about a dozen contenders thought uh, though the list is in flux. Uh, the Senator, this is former president is considering uh, a lot of people. Kelly, I Conway said uh, that he should choose someone who will help him win and govern and not be a distraction as he tries to expand his reach to minority voters, women, and political independents. Specifically, she said Trump should select someone who can speak about abortion with conviction and compassion and articulate what it means to be a pro-life Republican. Uh, unlike Democrats who are stuck with a wildly unpopular president and vice president, Trump has, she says, an embarrassment of riches in terms of who she can choose. I think that's true. A lot of good people talking to Pete Hegseth. He, he likes Tulsi Gabbard, 
I sort of think Tim Scott is one that he might be leaning to someone who I think would be uh, willing to, uh, to, to be a, a real uh, promoter of the president and his policies, but someone who understands that he is the number two person uh, there and not the number one person. And I think that's something you have to think about when you're a president, you don't want a vice president uh, who is going to be out there uh, outshining you, if it were, but I, but I think he's also, I think Tim Scott's very solid. It would also help dramatically, I think, with this, this movement that seems to be underway where uh, voters of color are leaving the Democrat Party in large numbers. Uh, the, the Democrats are very concerned about it, especially young uh, blacks and young Hispanics moving over to the Republican side of the equation because I think they remember what happened with Trump, and I think they feel like, uh, well, you know what, uh, it went pretty well for us under under Trump. Let's, uh, let's do that again. The numbers are out from the Wall Street Journal, and it, it, they are pretty interesting numbers, which lo- uh, looked at just battleground states. You know, I've told you uh, time and time again, think about the battleground states, think about the battleground states. That's where it really matters. And so I have, a, I have some numbers to share with you from this poll. The good news for Trump is he's up in six out of seven polls. Six out of seven polls, he is defeating Joe Biden. The other one is technically tied or may, maybe slight advantage to Biden, depending on how you look at it. Let me just go through them very quickly. Remember, this is where we win or lose the election. Arizona, Trump up by five. Georgia, Trump up by three. Michigan, Trump up by three. Nevada, Trump up by four. North Carolina, Trump up by eight. I think you got to take North Carolina out of the battleground pretty soon. Those numbers for a lot of polls have been very consistent. I think I think uh, North Carolina will go uh, for Trump. P- Pennsylvania, Trump up by three. Wisconsin, if you just look at a, at a runoff race between Biden and Trump, uh, it's a tie. If you put this is the weird one when you put the other candidates in there and you have a five way race, Biden wins by three. In most of the cases, that's very that's very much an anomaly, because in most of the cases, when you add in the other candidates, it is Trump who does better because the new, the other candidates take more away from from Biden. But you really want to know what are in the internals of the poll. Look beyond that glossy number on the top to find out where people are and what they're thinking. And as you do that, you find that these numbers really look overwhelmingly good for Donald Trump if if the pollsters are being told the truth by people. For example, in the wrong direction, right direction, which way is the country going? Right direction, wrong direction. 68% of those who were, were in this battleground poll said they feel the nation is going in the wrong direction. Now, a wrong direction, right direction question is really sort of a, a test question to see how people feel about the current administration. And when 68%, almost 70% of Americans say uh, we're in the wrong direction, remember these are Americans who live in the battleground states, that's a, that's a really sharp re- rebuke against the current administration. But there are other numbers here that still look good for Trump. Favorable versus unfavorable, he wins of, over Biden. Uh, here, here's one. If the 2024 election for president held today, for whom would you vote? Uh, overall, if you average Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, North Carolina, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, it is Donald Trump 39 and Joe Biden 36. So in all the battleground states, on average, Trump beats Biden by three points. And by the way, uh, in all the battleground states, Robert Kennedy, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. comes in with 11 percent of the vote. If you take him out, it's it gets uh, overall it gets I think a little better for let's see I think a little better for uh, for Donald Trump. Uh, if you go with uh, Trump Biden, the Libertarian and the Green Party, which I think is some some states will see that that lineup, then it's Trump forty three, Biden thirty nine again, and then they go into well if you haven't decided where you're leaning and Trump does pretty well there as well. Uh, do you approve or disapprove of the job that Joe Biden is doing? 60% of those who were polled in the battleground states say that they disapprove of the job that Joe Biden is doing. Do you approve or disapprove of the job that Donald Trump did as president? 
Uh, it comes to 51% approve, 47% disapprove. And, and you get to the issues, the real issues that matter to people, which informs how they vote. Uh, economy, Trump wins. Inflation and rising costs, Trump wins big by about 20 points. Immigration and border security, again, by 20 points, Donald Trump wins in a huge way. And we have been told time and time again by the pollsters, these are the things uh, that people truly care about. These are the things that matter uh, to the folks uh, who are getting ready to cast their ballots. So no matter what they say about how they're going to vote, when you look at the issues, they care about the issues, and Donald Trump's on the right side of those issues for all of these people. And let me end the numbers. I'll quit boring you with numbers after this. The question is, the mental and fit fitness needed to be president. Who has it? Trump, 48. Biden, 28. That's a 20-point gap. Uh, and that's a, that's a horrible number for Joe Biden as he continues to try to figure out a winning strategy. The Democrats are panicking. They're losing blacks. They're losing Hispanics. They're losing in the battleground states. They're losing with young people. And again, uh, the numbers overall, general election, are pretty tight. But I got to tell you, uh, when, you get, when you dig into where people are and what are the motivations and what do they think and what are the issues that matter, Trump's numbers look pretty good in that regard. I, I think uh, that's pretty good stuff there. Let's see what else do we have. I think, I think that's where I'm going to leave it. I'm going to take a break right now. I still have some technical issues to try to work through. Let's call it 17 minutes past the hour of, um, of five, 6 o'clock on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. You know, one of the things I love most about Genesis Diamonds is the laid-back feel, the vibe, the relaxed feeling you get when you walk in. There are no commissioned salespeople at Genesis, never, one ounce of pressure or intimidation. And if you're a diamond expert or if you don't know anything about diamonds, they will make you feel at home and at ease. And you can see a wide array of GIA-certified diamonds all in your price range, every shape. If you're looking for a lab-grown diamond, Genesis has those at well, as price is way, way below what others sell them for. And when it comes to the ring, well, Genesis has the ring designers that other stores can't even get. All the top brands from trusted, renowned designers like Takori and Viraggio, plus free service for life on any purchase. Designer jewelers that you can't find at any other stores, and a 110% diamond upgrade guarantee. And this is really Nashville's premier jeweler, voted time and time again as the best place to buy an engagement ring and best jewelry store in Middle Tennessee. There are two locations. You know where they are, Green Hills and Cool Springs. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Matt Murphy for Members Nutrition. I want to tell you about the Members Nutrition difference, and I want to encourage you to go over to the Members Nutrition website. Number one, they believe at Members Nutrition that they can sell vitamins and supplements at a lower cost point, and they're doing it every single day at membersnutrition.com. Number two, they want to make these products right here in the United States of America, not from some overseas company, and they do that every single day. I encourage you to go to membersnutrition.com. You'll get 50% off your purchase price at checkout. You don't have to put in any codes. Just go to membersnutrition.com. Once again, membersnutrition.com.
It is uh, 22 minutes now past the hour of 6 o'clock. I'm Brian Wilson, your friend and radio buddy. You're listening to The Drive on Super Talk 99.7. A very uh, cool evening uh, compared to what we've had in the last few days. But don't worry, by the time we get to the weekend, things will be looking pretty good. Headed down to the border, uh, again, I continue to worry about this particular issue perhaps more than anything else going on in this country. We saw how in Russia... Uh, three or four people could uh, commit an atrocity in a, in a venue, a concert venue, where 140 people were killed and others were injured, uh, and the building was set on fire and and there were explosives set off. What what a horrible thing! And that was four people. I, I keep worrying about the 1.8 million people that have come into our country that we don't know anything about. We don't know who they are. We don't know where they were going. We don't know where, where they ended up. We don't know what they're up to. And if you are somebody who wanted to take advantage of the chaos that we have on the border and you didn't have our best interests in hearts, you certainly would take advantage of it. I believe, I believe very with every fiber of my being that the Chinese are taking advantage of this situation, that the Russians are taking advantage of this station, and, and, and the people in ISIS-K and other terrorist organizations are taking advantage of this situation. Here we go. A Somalian terrorist who was on the FBI watch list, apprehended, and then released by border agents in 2023, has been rearrested after spending one year living freely in the United States. A known Somali terrorist spent nearly a year in the U.S. after being wrongly released by the feds before he was arrested again. This from the Post Millennial. According to a report from the New York Post, a 27-year-old Somalian man yet to be identified was on the terrorist watch list as a, quote, confirmed member of Shabab and was involved with trafficking and transportation of explosives and firearms. Despite this, the terrorist was released after initially being caught by authorities entering the country illegally in California in March of 2023, eventually rearrested in Minnesota in January. GOP lawmakers now demanding answers about the mishap. How did this happen? How did you have someone that was on the terrorist watch list and then you accidentally release him? Uh, and did the Shabab, al-Shabaab terrorist travel to Minnesota with, with the assistance of a non-government organization, and so which one was responsible for transporting the individual to Minnesota. Uh, the Biden administration's open border policies allowed a known terrorist to roam from freely through our state, writes House Majority Whip Tom Emmer, and now they must answer for this inexcusable negligence. Well, I want to know this, and here, you know, this is somebody who actually came in contact with law enforcement and still was able to find his way into the country, to blend into the fabric of America, and especially in, in, in Minnesota, where there are many Somalians who live there, if you don't know. So um, it's interesting to me that, that, that this happened, and this was somebody that was actually processed by Border Patrol. Makes you wonder who's coming into this country and are trying to avoid law enforcement uh, really concerns me. Uh, it concerns me a great deal. And then uh, this, from the Washington Times, Steve Dine and the reporters done some great work here. The House Judiciary Committee announced a probe Wednesday into massive bungling by Homeland Security, which failed to file summonses in the immigration courts for hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants, causing some 200,000 cases to be dismissed. Now, the department has managed to refile the charges in about a quarter of the cases, according to data that's available, leaving the rest to roam free in the U.S. without any case against them. I don't think this was by accident. I don't think this was somebody who just overlooked something or somebody something fell through the cracks. I think this was negligence that was, was done on purpose because I think this is, that, well, well, we just, we, well, we, you know, we didn't get around to filing those cases. They were just overwhelmed here. So, yes, 200,000 people can now roam the country freely. Um, Ohio Representative Jim Jordan, committee chairman and Representative John McClintock, who heads the immigration subcommittee, said the bungle has created a mess for the immigration courts because judges are wasting time on bad cases. Uh, and this is really interesting. In some cases, they get into court and then they find that the, well, that the, the summonses had not been filed. The paperwork was not done properly. And the judges, because they don't have any other choice, end up just dismissing them. 
I'm sorry, but we can't find the paperwork. You're free to go. Wow. Wow. More than 190,000 cases have been dismissed over the notice to appear bungle from 2021 to now. Uh, That includes a staggering 80,000 cases in 2022. Um, 25.4% of the dismissed cases have been refiled, only 25%. I guess they went back and said, well, there's some people we just got to file on. Letter comes one week before the Senate is slated to take up articles of impeachment against Mr. Mayorkas. The articles accuse him of lying to the public and intentionally subverting immigration enforcement laws. Bungling roughly 150,000 immigration cases could add to the evidence against Mr. Mayorkas at the Senate trial, uh, although Democrats are pondering how to head off the proceedings. Yeah, listen, they need to go ahead with this thing on Mayorkas. There's no doubt about it. They must absolutely do that. And uh, and the way that you do that is is to take those those articles of impeachment and even if the Democrats don't really want to take it up, make them squirm, make them get on record about this. Americans know we have a problem with immigration. They don't like what they're seeing down at the border. And they will note the, those Democrats who were against having a hearing against Mayorkas. I don't think we're going to have an impeachment against uh, the uh, the current president. It seems like on Capitol Hill, there's a sense that that's not the way to go. They're going to continue to investigate Hunter Biden. And they may pass on some things, but they they seem to have come up to the conclusion that they don't want to try him. Uh, they don't want to try to impeach him. They don't want to do an impeachment trial of uh, Biden in the Senate. But Mayorkas is a different matter. And I think the man is responsible for gross negligence. And I think that he knowingly, uh, willfully violated the laws of this country for political purposes. And I think that's it's crass political purposes of the reason this is allowed to be taking place. They could stop it in 10 minutes if they wanted to, and they choose not to. And they're not going to do anything now. It's not going to happen till after the elections. And hopefully uh, we get a different president in there, and he can make the calls, write the papers, sign his name to the documents, and get this thing stopped. But in the meantime, they're going to try to get as many people through and into the country where they conveniently forget to file the paperwork and they're allowed to go free. Something is very wrong about this. 30 minutes now past the hour of six o'clock.
It is uh, 636 now on Super Talk 99.7. I'm Brian Wilson. And finally, uh, all of our technical bugaboos have been worked out. We are back up and running. Feels better now, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, you know, this, this, I got I to gotta say that the equipment that we have here is remarkably reliable. I mean, it really is. I mean, I think, Chris, are we, how long have we been doing it from this location? I mean, I've, we've had this house now a couple of years. Yep. We did it before over at the other place in Mount Juliet. Uh, and, and I don't think we ever lost a minute until, until this afternoon, maybe one other time, yeah. maybe, maybe. Yeah. But yeah, and, it, just, and, it hasn't, it's been very reliable. It's, it's really reliable stuff. And, uh, and so apparently the, the, it is internet based. Uh, when I speak instantaneously, my voice is digitized, sent down through this magic box called a Comrex. Uh, it is uh, sent across the internet and undigitized and turn back into analog sound in the station. And that happens in like, I forget how many milliseconds, like 15 milliseconds or so. It doesn't take long. Yeah. No, it, so it's almost as if you're hearing me in real time for all practical purposes. And uh, and it's just, you you hit the button, you go, you forget about it. Uh, and so when it, when it fails, uh, you know, it wasn't the box, it was the internet that failed at least for a short period of time. Thank goodness they got it back up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm I'm told you said they said people say there was an an outage in uh, in Wilson County. That, that's what I got a report of. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but someone did comment that uh, said that there wasn't. They did experience an outage, so I'm assuming it was probably just related mm -hmm. to well, you know, a wider enough, problem. The good news is that is and now then I'm scrambling back here trying to figure out how to make <laughs> make do a, a makeshift workaround, and uh, and I'm turning uh, equipment racks upside down and <laughs> checking connections and all that kind of stuff. So when I get back in there and I finally get hooked back up and I'm connected, yeah. now I can't hear anything. <laughs> and, and all it was, all it was is that when I, when I turned over a rack to make an adjustment, make sure all the connections were solid, I accidentally, it must've hit a button. Mm, yep. And it, 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 it took me a lot. There's a lot of buttons here. That's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I have a ton of buttons. Anyway, glad we're back up. It is, it is always like a harrying experience. And then to be, have to work where you can't hear things the way you always like to hear things. Yeah. I that's can't, irritating. I it's, cannot speak unless I can hear myself. Yeah, like I just, hard. I feel like I'm, you know, I, I, it's just bizarre. We get used to listening to our own voices and our headsets. And when they're yeah. not there, it seems like you're just talking into a vacuum. Yeah. It, you, yeah. You, and it's, it's a very strange feeling. One way or the other, glad we're back up, and sorry for any inconvenience we may have caused you. I, I found this story a little interesting. Uh, I would like to be a member of the Three Comma Club. You know what that is? No clue. That means you're worth a million. Oh, well, let's see, that's a one, zero, 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 two, zero, 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 three, three. Is that no? That'd be one. Yeah, that'd be a billion. No, that's except, right. Except, is it right? Yeah, because you get the comma after the one. No, it's a billion. And then, oh yeah, that would be a billion. That's a billionaire. Yeah, so you'd yeah. be a, not a millionaire, but a billionaire. I'd like to be just you know. I'd t I would take the two comma club. <laughs> Same. And I would do that. I'd be really happy with that. Uh, some well-known Americans recently became members. Forbes list of new billionaires for 2024. The elite club consists of a record number of 2,781 billionaires around the world this year. Most of them are in the United States. Okay, you want let's go through some of these. And I I've, I've got You're going to be surprised at some of these names. Um Shun Sako Sagami, youngest self-made billionaire on the list is the Japanese founder of a Tokyo-based advisory firm M&A Research Institute, which employs artificial intelligence to buy find buyers for companies. Uh that's that's number 5. Number four is Maggie Gu and Molly Miao and Ren Zhao Zing, three Chinese co-founders of Shine, which is a Gen Z's fast fashion retailer. Todd Graves uh, is the founder of fast food giant Raising Cane's. Graves is worth an estimated $9.1 billion. Uh, he is... Uh, personifies the entrepreneurial spirit, the promise that dedication, drive, hard work, and a great concept, dreams can be achieved. His biography on the Chicken Finger Company website says only 24 years old when he began his journey. Todd and his crew have grown Raising Cane's from a single campus restaurant 
to one of the fastest growing large restaurant best bands in the United States. Growing fast in this area. It is. Yeah. It is. Irvin Magic Johnson, worth now an estimated $1.2 billion. The Los Angeles, uh, Los Angeles Lakers icon is dominated uh, off the court by investing in professional sports teams, including the Los Angeles Dodgers, WNBA Los Angeles Sparks, NFL's Washington Commanders, a chain of movie theaters bearing his name, a Starbucks franchises, and more. But here's the one that will surprise you, perhaps. Taylor Swift. The hottest pop star on the planet became the world's most famous billionaire. And the 34-year-old Swift became the first musician to become a billionaire as a direct result of songs and performances. She is worth an estimated $1.1 billion. Oof. It's good to be Tay-Tay. I mean, think about this. You would think that somebody like Paul McCartney might have beat her to that. Elvis, had he, had he been alive today, might have been able to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. But she's the first to break $1 billion in revenue According to Forbes, I think the problem with with uh, with McCartney is they lost their catalog. That's part of it. The other part of it is uh, you had to split it four ways. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you know, you know, so, and the, so I think anything that happens with the Beatles estate gets split into four different accounts um, for the heirs and Paul mm -hmm. McCartney and Ringo. Well, anyway. Um, one bit. Now I got to tell. Can I convince? Can I? Oh, I, I don't know if I could. Con should confess this or not. I watched a little bit of the Eras movie. <laughs> this is your your deep dark confession. Well, I know, I know, and you know, I, I I felt guilty about it the whole time I was watching it. But I mean, I I just was trying. I I think from a standpoint of, she's a pop phenomenon. Everybody in the world's talking about her. Uh, she is a billionaire now, and, and, you know, she's in the news for this and that and the other. And I'm trying to figure out what is the appeal because I, quite frankly, I mean, there are a lot of people out there who can write a good song with a good pop hook. A lot of people do that. But I, but they, they, aren't, they aren't Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. What is different about Taylor Swift is the thing that I wanted to know. Excuse me. And so I watched a little of it, and you know what? I, I, I walked away saying... She's polished, she's a solid performer, and she knows how to market the hell out of herself. And, and I mean, I got to tell you that that stage show was was remarkable. I mean, I I haven't watched the whole thing. I I just watched a little bit of it because it was available to me, and I was curious. But it's it's something. It's I mean, it's it's a phenomenon for sure. There's no doubt about it. <clears throat> and and she's got she's still in the prime. This whole day is just not going very well for me right now. It's almost <laughs> over. I know. Just it's a few more minutes. Just a few more minutes if I can just <laughs> hang on. Will Mark, when we get through, we always have a little assessment, you and I. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a pretty good show. Well, I, I wish we I think we could do better. Wish I'd done this. We have a little talk we have at the end of the show. And then there's some days I just look at you and say, well, it was a show. <laughs> Today's will, will be... We, we shall never speak of this again. <laughs> we shall never speak of this again. <laughs> That's right. Maybe I can. I don't know. I just can't. I can't get my level set right. Uh, I, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, and this is something we talked about in the in the first hour and got a tremendous response on it. Uh, could arming school staff in Tennessee make your child safer? In Nashville, uh, they are they are thinking about uh, the state legislature is thinking about passing a bill that would allow teachers or educators or people who work in schools to have a, a valid carry permit and to carry on campus. The idea, of course, is that, well, we know, for example, in the Covenant shooting, that the situation uh, went very bad in the first three minutes. Everything that happened really happened in the first three minutes. There, there were three, there were six people killed within three minutes. And the police didn't arrive for about eight minutes. And then when they got there, they, they did remarkable things, heroic things, brave things. But it just takes them a while to get there. In a situation where you, you know, no seconds count, police are minutes away. It's just the way it is. Unless you have a school resource officer. In this case, I think the person was off duty that day. Uh, or you have somebody on campus who can respond, perhaps, in some way. So this bill is now uh, making its way through the, the state legislature. I think the Senate has passed it. 
The House is yet to consider it. I think this could pass. School staff would have to have a valid handgun carry permit in Tennessee, be fingerprinted by law enforcement agency, pass a psychological evaluation, have the written permission of the chief of the appropriate law enforcement agency, and complete 40 hours of training each year. When those requirements are met, the director of schools and the chief of local law enforcement agency would be the only ones notified about who in that school is permitted to carry. You would tell the director of schools, you would tell the chief of local law enforcement uh, that, that, that that was possible, because if, if they did respond, you'd want somebody to know, you're know, responding officer, you know, there is somebody who's a teacher who's in there uh, with a weapon, so be careful. Um, not every school has an SRO. There are 1,868 public schools in Tennessee, and 1,302 of those schools have SROs. That leaves 566 schools across the state that do not have an SRO. And so, you know, the question is, how do you feel about that? And we did a sort of an informal poll, a poll on, the serve, on the phone, and we found that most people liked it. Some people were a little queasy about it. But I like I liked the, the kind of hurdles that have to be met. And I'm sure not every, every, every teacher is even going to consider this, but if there are some out there who have the ability, I think when you weigh the risk versus the benefits, let's assume that, that schools are not hiring people who are mentally defective or have serious psychological problems. You would think that the, in order to be in a classroom, you have to have a certain norm. You'd have to meet certain societal norms. And so, you know, if, if that kind of person going through the training, I think it's okay. Uh, will this pass the House? I have a feeling it may pass the House. And that, that would be something that I think would make our children safer. Again, um, the, the whole idea of, uh, of SRO officers is something that I like. But in this particular case at Covenant, as I understand it, they had a, an officer that was normally on duty. It was on vacation. You know, and they just they didn't, they didn't have a ch- plan to back that person up when they were gone. I don't know how they would, they're looking at it now, but I, I bet a little differently one way for sure. But I got to tell you that it would be nice to know there's somebody there. You know, it, 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 you never want to be in a situation, I think, where it's all them and no you. You have no ability to respond. And this would give at least some limited ability to respond should the unthinkable happen at your child's school. Uh, I, I think it's probably going to pass, uh, and I think that's going to be something to watch closely in the state legislature in the next few days. Well, Chris, uh, we have made it to the end. <laughs> Thankfully. Yes. My work here is done. It is 50 minutes now <laughs> past the hour of 6 o'clock. Well, my work is almost done. The chairman of the Federal Reserve has said that we're on an unsustainable fiscal path. We aren't going to pay off that $34 trillion debt anytime soon. And you know what they'll do. They'll just print money to pay the interest on the debt and then debase the U.S. dollar. Maybe you ought to think about precious metals, something you can hold, something real, something that has actual value. That I'm telling you, you, maybe you've thought about adding gold or precious metals, but you feel like, well, I don't really have the knowledge to make a smart decision. I, I want you to know that's exactly how I felt. But I got the professional guidance I needed at Nashville Gold and Coin. You see, gold and silver can be a safe haven in uncertain economic times. And my friends at Nashville Gold and Coin are standing by to answer all your questions about the precious metals market. The way it works is you make an appointment, then you sit down one-on-one with my friends at Nashville Gold and Coin. They'll answer all your questions and help make a, a precious metals investment that is right for you. It's friendly. You will learn a lot. You will never be subjected to a high-pressure sales pitch. To set up that one-on-one appointment, just go to NashvilleGoldenCoin.com. That's NashvilleGoldenCoin.com. 
Hey, what's up guys? This is Matt Murphy for Members Nutrition. I want to tell you about the Members Nutrition difference and I want to encourage you to go over to the Members Nutrition website. Number one, they believe at Members Nutrition that they can sell vitamins and supplements at a lower cost point and they're doing it every single day at MembersNutrition.com. Number two, they want to make these products right here in the United States of America, not from some overseas company, and they do that every single day. I encourage you to go to MembersNutrition.com. You'll get 50% off your purchase price at checkout. You don't have to put in any codes. Just go to MembersNutrition.com. Once again, MembersNutrition.com. The guaranteed offer is the easiest way to sell your home. It's really simple. We bring you an all-cash offer, you close in as little as 21 days, no home inspections, no lockboxes, no open houses. Go to MarkSpain.com to get a guaranteed offer and start packing.